late, so yes, go me. Okay. I had to trim up the, the all that mess. What you want for all that you believe It's right to fight for what we want To live the way we please As long as we have done our best Then no one can do more I'm not smoking. Hello. She's yes. still pointing at Lilibet. Yep, well, let's call it a show. Uh, not too bad. Um keeping busy. Uh went to the went to the market, lovely Saturday market we have, and bought myself some flowers. So those are on my let's see. Oh yes, lovely flowers. Lovely flowers. We have a beautiful farmers and crafters market on Saturdays in downtown, so I went and enjoyed that. Hmm. I, I, I've been hibernating. It's February. This is what we do in the Northeast. We come out when it's spring, and that's fine. But um, apart from that, working. And Friday, I got very angry. Very angry. Oh. Well, I read this post on one of my Dungeons and Dragons groups. It's about a group of people, group of players that rescued a kobold and befriended him. And then in order to take out a town after, you know, dispatching the bandits that they had been sent to do, they dressed him up as the bandit leader, told him it was a play, and then proceeded to murder the kobold in front of everyone while he was thinking, it was a play, these are their, my friends, they won't hurt me. That made me angry. I don't care. That made me angry. So now, he's mine. Yes. Not soon, but soon enough. His name is Gaw. Gaw. No, no, no. Gaw. G A W. As in. Gah! Hello. Kai. I'm angry that we have psychotic players in D&D roaming around freely and uncuffed. Yes, yes, I don't care. They pissed me off. They need to be punished. Yes. Gaw lives, justice for Gaw. I mean, I could bring back Colin if you really want. I thought so. Yeah. We try as we might, we we can still hear her.
Nope. I, uh, <clears throat> I had oh. muted myself. Damn it. My Padawan must live. I Long have become Kyle. the Alpha and the Omega. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Please pass my suggest along to your DM friend. Let oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that, oh, that entire revenant. threat is these people need to die. Yeah. Yeah. They need to be taught a lesson. I can talk. Hello. I am doing the talking. Are you sure? Uh, it was an average week until yesterday when I bought the new laptop. It's oh. being shipped in. Hey. Oh, yes. Uh, an MIS or whatever gaming, I put the stats in the thing there. Eight cores and 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of memory and just, I'm going to do things with that. I'm going to... The Pope's going to kick out a stained glass window. He's going to be spanking it. And there goes, like, you know, Jesus and Mary in the manger, and like all the cardinals are running around. You purchased Skynet. Like <laughs> yep, I approve. <laughs> it comes with a free Terminator. Yes. I want to talk to <laughs> Dr. Senator about a few upgrades. Yeah, we're, you know where I'm going. It's good. <laughs> Let's Four speak. score and many years ago, Absolutely. our forefathers brought upon this country. Oh, hey, there it goes. It started working. Yay. Four score and many years ago. There we go. Now we have sound. <laughs> Can, you hear Can you hear me yet? I turned off the sound. <sighs> ah! There's my little thing. That's it's reappeared. It's worked. <laughs> Can you hear me yet? There you yep. go. Hey, 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 I'm special. We can hear oh, you. I hear us now, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, so called. You asked for that. You let yourself in for it. You should have just stayed quiet, quite frankly. I know. I, if they had been like quiet the entire time. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um. Hello, welcome to the Flash and Play podcast. Uh, I'm Siobhan here. Come to the Plains, American Plains, smoking on long How many weeks? 
Uh, David, How are your weeks week starting with yeah, Lullaby? A little bit this week was good. Your week was good. Yeah, annoying spanky for you. Good. Mm-hmm. Spanky's good. How was your week, your Siobhan? Well, hang on. We haven't finished talking about your laptop. Your new laptop. Uh, no, that's good enough cause, because you have something to uh, share with us, don't you? I have lots to share with you. That's the problem. Well, please. All right. Hang on. Hang sharing. on. I got to put the... Make sure the animals are put away in the petting zoo. Our trays are up in the upright position. Mm-hmm. Do we need snacks? No. Well, no. I'll, I'll, I will always say yes to that. I mean, <laughs> that's a stupid question. You're, you're a absolutely bit. right, a little bit. We may need snacks. Don't forget to have the bowl of suspicious yellow dip. Um, <laughs> There's a reachy cup. I don't know, something like that. Right. Okay. I thought there was a Slim Jim over here. I may be mistaken. Yes. Anybody want? Okay, I'm good. Let's do it. Right then. Uh, <laughs> you to me. Do, 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 covered. Do, 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 do you want good news or bad news? Oh, let's bad go with the funniest always. first. The, with the what? Oh, sorry, there you go. The funniest. Garden Gate Saga. <laughs> Remember how I said it was over? Do you remember what you said, Brian? It's never over. It's Brian never was over. right, everyone. It'll all be over. Okay. What happened? It's all happened on the same day. Um, quick catch up. A lot of problems getting my flat basically dis- disabled proof and getting a platform out in the garden. Watch previous flashing blades for every single detail. Um, yeah. So I got a phone call this week. Oh, dear. Uh, I got two phone calls. First one um, was from the man from the council. He was the guy who'd come to inspect the work and everything else like that. He's not happy with the work. Yuck. Oh, uh, no. Because they didn't make the floor either side of the door lip smooth so you could just push a chair straight out um there's still bumps and this that and the other which aren't supposed to be there and so he's getting in touch with them and they're gonna have to come back and redo everything well that's a plus for you well yes but and then it gets better it gets better that very afternoon not ten minutes later, I got a phone call. This is, I am, I know I'm essentially retired herd, but I'm still a member of a union. I'm a member of Unite, the union. Um, they do a special membership for people such as me. Um, it's very useful. You get le- free legal advice, and which I need to take up on, actually. And um, life insurance. A basic policy, say, think think it's five grand, just enough to cover the funeral, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, this bloke's phoning up. Hello, um, we're just starting up a pilot scheme to see if we can actually be of any use in this particular um, arena of the public. Mm Mm-hmm. How's your landlord on things like repairs and the like? And now she's gone again. <laughs> or I am. Hello, he's doing a thing. I'm still talking. So you missed that, didn't you? Probably. How's your landlord been with repairs and the like? We haven't needed any, really, but they've pretty much... No, no, uh, no, Brian. That's what I got asked on the electric telephone. Oh, that's what you got <laughs> asked. Yes. Oh, if, dear God. Yeah. Of all the people to ask. Thereby hangs a tale. You can point out the the episodes of the show to them and have them just watch like the 50, first 15 minutes. Well, Thomas does. Hello, Thomas. Um, Hi, Thomas. That's my... La- that's my um, housing manager. He has to keep tuning in in case I say something slanderous. Um, <laughs> except I've never done anything but tell the entire truth. I've never done anything but t- tell the exact truth. So I'm not stupid. I'm just saying I'm stacked for snacks. I, I got I got none. snacks all over the place here. In yes, fact, well, uh, to make 
to make Siobhan's week a little better while the other I know. I know. I know. A little bit went out and hunted some Girl Scouts for me. And that's the response. They were at the market. Oh, so wonderful. They will go in the mail. Thank you. Hopefully this Can week. Can you send some tobacco as well? I'm nearly out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm nearly out of tobacco. Oh, I won't have, 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 have any until tobacco. Wednesday. Okay, I yeah, wonder I'm what I'm going to be like over here. without tobacco. And oh, they dear. say America has a weight problem. It's not a problem. No. no it's not a problem. No, we can live yes. with it. It's right. We're the same over we here. Are doing, like I say. It's only a no. problem if you're best. unhappy with it. Exactly. No, you see, keep a little chubby on the cheeks and the wrinkles don't show. That's, it helps with winter. Too, yeah. That is why people, well, no, people say you that, don't look your age. I say it's the flab smoothing out all the creases. I prefer <laughs> the term insulation. That too. Now, see, you guys don't understand America's uh, policy for overseas involvement. Um, since there are so many skinny people in so many other countries of the world, yeah. we have to uphold the fat ratio, which means we have to be the fattest. This country is in the world why since, you, you know. don't let people who don't uh, get food skinny into your country. If only That's the rest of y'all would fat up, we could go back to being skinny, but no. Mm -hmm. Right. See? There's That's a certain the fat to weight ratio in the universe. Right. We're holding up everybody else's end. Just like Atlas well, with weighing blood, it right, right down yeah. would be a better way of putting well, it. Well, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, of course. Well, you know. Do you know what I think what, gravity comes from? What, when Go people ahead. do diet talk and stuff at work, because I work with a lot of, oh. you know, uh, women of that sort of age. Diets I are just into fads. The, well, I waltz into the room and go, are why would I ever want... Yes. Why would I ever want there to be less of me? And then wander out. And it uh, <laughs> it usually stops that conversation dead. <laughs> Practically perfect in any way, in every way. That's exactly. all I'm saying. Spit spot. Yeah. Um, hey, in my defense, I eat salads for lunch at work. I can eat whatever the hell I want any other time. There you go. Well, that's your choice. Damn your right. mind chooses to eat green shit. <laughs> and I punish myself, true. and then I reward myself. Okay. There you go. He's got the sadomasochism cycle down. Very Excellent. Good. good work. I approve. Masochist, so. whip me, whip me, sadist. <laughs> no. Um. Okay. The bad news. It's been a bit of a week for trans abuse for me. Um, yeah. As I think I may have mentioned in the past on past shows, there's somebody over at our local shops who thinks he's still at school. And the schmuck again. Yeah, that that exactly. That schmuck. Um, I think we're going to have to go play baseball. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm going to play. Leave it to auntie. Um, yeah, this time, he's now starting to try and find out about me, who I am. Um, and I think possibly he might be building towards something. Um, I'm scared. I'm genuinely scared. So much so, Toby Haydoke bought me a body cam, bless him. Um, um. Which I call Spanky. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, which is great, except I can't work out how to change the date, or date stamp on it. Okay, if so, you know what brand it is, you can probably Google the user manual. Oh, it came with one. There you go. It's translated from the Albanian. Oh, good. <laughs> Try polite. Googling. I, I suspect that there will be something that will be easier. It'll yeah, because be the, yeah. the, the instructions... How the do instruction I change manual, the date on XYZ? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so... He thought I was another trans woman, a woman called Rita, who's been in the area, well, since the 90s that I know of. Um, and it's a case of, well, no, there's more than one trans woman out there. So he's basically calling me by this woman's dead name, and I had absolutely no idea that he was even referring to me. Um, and, oh, that's better. And... Um, I just turned around and said, look, I've, I'm not that. I've never been called that. You've got the wrong person. However, that unnerved me. Um, hence the body cam. And I decided it was time I... 
didn't go on the offensive per se, but got a bit more information about what's going on, uh, about who this guy is. I found out a have lot you about... Have him yet? Hmm? Have I doxed yes, him yet? Have him? Not quite that close, but um, close. Um, I, I, I found out a fair bit of information about him, because what he doesn't realise is I've been up at those shops every day for about 20 years. Have you found outside. his grinder account? No. And not only fans either. Um, oh, that'll amuse you. Uh, so, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Certain people have said they're going to go and have a word with him. I've made them swear to me they're not going to use violence. Um, Good. I don't like that sort of thing. But um, it might well, work. Other... It might not work. The other I'll thing fly is... Into him. I'm a walker. Bullies, which sounds like what this guy uh, yeah, is Yeah, that's exactly. Is yeah. bullying, right? But he's, he's mad uh, angry with it. You know, it's uh, weird. Uh, is, is really a power game. You know that. Mm -hmm. So if, mm -hmm. if he realizes other people aren't interested in his game and other people think he looks stupid and ridiculous for trying to play it, uh, and that they're your friends, they're your acquaintances, they're people who've known you for a long time, right? And they're not interested, like, he looks like a fool. Mm, um, unfortunately. Clearly the problem is his problem. He and he's is doing a man, this to other people as well. He is a man full of anger. He has goes at other people up at the shops for other reasons. This so is a man so who's angry, really angry. And, and that is a him God problem. Is. That he should be getting therapy for and not taking it out on other human beings on the planet. Thank you very much indeed. So we're going to have to wait and see now what happens. It's also been a pretty bad week being trans online. I do um, have a question for you. Hang on a second. Let me get that. Okay. Just let me get this out, please, Brian. No um, problem. Yeah, lots of stuff from people online, um, whether it's about that bloody Potter game or whether it's about single sex spaces or this that and the other our local uh, our national press a day hardly a day goes past without a headline on the front page something bad about trans people um yeah it's i am genuinely scared to leave my flat now that's without any bullshit at all um i never used to be no it's, but now I really am. I'm doing the um, the meerkat look. The, all the time I'm out. It's um, it's not been a good week to be trans. Let's put it that way. Um, I mean, there was a young girl who was stabbed to death this week who was trans. And I heard about that. The fourteen-year-old kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no. I, I. We. We haven't heard whether it was actually a hate crime or not. But the, the amount of abuse that the family and anybody has received about it, because she was trans. It's. It's sickening. It's absolutely sickening. That's um. Let's put it this way. I don't know where we're going to be this time next year. I might be in a camp somewhere. Who knows? Um, right. So, um, majority of people aren't that stupid. Those fascists are always loud, but they're usually small in number. My, my the, apologies. The only problem with that is, is that you know the Germany thing where I watched and let it happen. That's that's essentially I don't think what we're in we've that world here. anymore. The the problem also is that while these people are usually the loudest voice in the room. There are an awful lot of allies and advocates that view that these people no longer need to be in the gene pool. Mm -hmm. And there oh are God, yes. some of them that really view that those people, those kind of, those people, we don't need, we don't need them. Well, this, they're not needed in this society any longer. This, and the sooner that they can die out social or be helped along, do that. the better. It's social evolution. I said two or three years ago, I remember talking to talking with Dave outside the cat. Oh, it must have been more than two or three years ago. Um, humanity's at a crossroads. 
Mm-hmm. We've got to make a decision what sort of people we're going to be. That's why we have the so-called culture wars right now. Um, you know something? Uh, I want to point something out. Please. There's and and you can find it if you Google it. I'm sure it's really no, I find, Google but nothing. There's a you piece ever tell of graffiti me. that was written, found on a well, wall me. in Rome, and it's like two thousand years old. Mm-hmm. And it's talking about it's someone who's complaining, and it's about our youth are in gangs, and their politics suck, and this war sucks, and all that. And it's like you could read it. And it would make it would match today perfectly, right? People are people. We're tending people towards people. this the society that Rome had actually, like towards its latter day, as fractious, as divisive, as yeah. you know, as wildly liberal and as archly conservative. It's just every empire does that. The problem with America is it's a very young nation. We're still figuring out who we are. It's not like in England, for example, or Great Britain, where you can like go over to a piece of dirt, point at, it, and go, "My family's been here for two thousand years." No, Most people you in America can't do can't that, do that you to can't... a piece of dirt in, say, 20 years. No, you no, know? No, <laughs> it's like... no, we can't do that, Spanky, unfortunately. If you do that, Not all um, of you. a I couple mean, will come along can, and go, though, right? excuse me, do you know you've been looking at that piece of dirt for 2,000 years? Would you care to be wrong? That was a joke. They I actually gotcha. trace the genetic le- legacy of a man from Bronze Age to England mm. to someone that lived within 25 miles of where his body was discovered and there's a spitting image oh mm-hmm. wow that yeah that bog corpse they found the guy the murderer whatever that had been hung yeah. and tossed in the bog i remember that that was that pretty cool might explain anyway getting back to what i was saying that might explain to you <laughs> quite why i was so fucked off about that harry potter game thing all right i had no idea um retta was playing it when i made that post and it's only that Retro, I don't know if you're even watching, but it's only that I saw you. You answered it, and I was, I was like, oh, okay. But I just wanted to put across just how difficult it's getting for people like me now. Um, because I think people need to know. Oops. And there well, are little then that's things. A good thing. There are little things people can do to be helpful and to make things more welcoming. Um, and, and, um, this is from a couple of years ago. I, I don't happen to have any students this year um, that I know of. Uh, but a few years ago, all of our students wear their name, you know, their ID badges. Um, we never and, had to wear uh, badges. Did you have to wear badges. Okay. Oh, oh of wow. course. It's so after a shooting, people know who they are. Yeah, that is why. You can identify the It's identification. Right? Yeah. Oh, Jesus, that was supposed to be a rather sick joke. No. No. Unfortunately, the sick joke is the sick truth. Um, mm-hmm. oh, I'm it's, so sorry. It's it's all. I mean, it's also ideally to be able to at a glance tell who belongs on campus and who doesn't. Um, but that is a serious secondary reason. Yes. Um, uh, I'm so sorry. Well, welcome to the American education system. Well, we got a problem with knives over here. It's not. Admittedly, we I... don't tend to get mash knifings. We'll take knives no. over fake <laughs> AR-15s any day of the fucking I, week. I had to stand in front of my kids the morning after Sandy Hook. Oh. So... Have you how had the to do hell any drills? Did you, how the hell did you address it, Lilibet? I cried at them. That's what I did. <laughs> I cried at them. <laughs> And uh, I told them that policy. if anything happened to them, I would keep them safe. That's what I told them. That's my job. Have you guys job. had to do any drills lately or anything? Oh, we do drills every month. We do a drill yeah. every single month. We do a fire drill every month. We do a lockdown drill every month. We have for years. I think. Do they know it's a drill? Oh, yeah. They're told it's a drill. Okay. I, I've seen some places that do and the we, drill. We we cry, do. They cry Teachers wolf, do they? The yeah, don't warn yeah. people. Yeah, we, no, we, we, UVA that. did that, remember? Can't do we that. Don't and freaked do, out everybody. Yeah, we don't do the scary... I mean, it's... We don't do the this feels like it's real kind of drill. We do a drill like Good. we do a fire drill without getting into too many details, but yeah. everybody knows a fire drill is a fire drill and you have your procedures at your place and you know what to do, mm-hmm. but you're not scared about it because you do it all the time. Um, and that's how we run our drills. Um, so that it's, it's a matter of routine, which is sick and horrible, and yes. I hate it. Um, yeah. But with the ID badges, um, 
a couple of years ago, I had two students who were trans oh, yes. and had their names, mm -hmm. um, which were not the names on the registrar mm -hmm. because they hadn't gotten to the point in the process yet where they had legally changed names, but they were, they had socially transitioned. And um, I went to the, uh, the, the lady who, who ran the front desk is very a rules oriented person because people who run front desks usually Tend are. Tend to be, yeah. Um, be that's why they're hired. I'd be hopeless. Yeah. yeah. And, and she was very much the name has to match the name. Like that's, and I said, I'm not doing that. Then we'll hold off on those two kids. And I went to my boss mm -hmm. and I said, this is important for these children. This is important for them, for their mental health, for their safety. This is, mm -hmm. this is what we're going to do. And my boss Especially agreed. Especially for their safety. And they wore, the, they got badges with their names that were the correct names that they should have been called. Mm -hmm. Not the name on some roster that no longer matches them. Mm -hmm. How, what did Ron DeSantis have to say? Uh, I don't think he was governor at the time, but I don't care what he has to say. He, cannot... he would have sent armed guards in to immediately take their name tags and put new ones oh, on them and shave their heads and have you put not them in heard? jackboots or some shit. Um, Ron DeSantis um, has basically gone, and I think it was a university in Florida. He's asked yeah. for all the details of all the trans students. Uh, uh, that's every oh, terrifying. Wow, yeah. university in Florida. He's not yeah. asked for all the details of all the trans students. That's inaccurate. Okay. What he has done is asked for um, the records related to health services, which includes trans services. Hmm. Um, which, Isn't it illegal for him to have them? Wait, yeah. he wants people's medical records? Yes, essentially. He's not uh, allowed to have that. He shouldn't be allowed no, to have that. He's the he's governor. He's not a not, doctor. He's not. Fuck and him. it's not him personally, of course. It's some office somewhere. But I'm sure it's a mass law uh, in an office, but still. Yeah, it's uh yeah, it's illegal. Um and uh he's he's a hmm. I, I don't really care what his personal opinion is. Um he Didn't can be state, mad about state things. Supreme Court shoot him down on something lately? Uh huh. Say and something he did, he did was anyway. unconstitutional. Yeah, and he yeah. did it anyway. Oh, yeah, he'd he ignore, anyway. the, ignore the ruling. Gotta love that. How's the mm -hmm. court gonna enforce that? I'm dying to see that. Man. I would yeah, I'll I'll enjoy that. Um uh, he is uh, not my most favorite person in the world. Um, anyway, no. Shall we? The people but, who he is their most favorite person in the world, we don't want those people. Sh 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 uh, sh shall we, we move on? We don't need these people. But the, 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 people. my point with the story... Ah, thank you, yes. ...is that we you as... Got a point. I do! No, I no, no! We, She's the blade, the flashing her. blade has a point! <laughs> There's a point in our ramblings, <laughs> yes! Um, is that we as individuals can help to make, we can't fix the world, none of us are in charge of the world, but we can make, we can do what we can in our little sphere to make the world a little bit easier for trans people specifically and for minority people in general. Well, and yeah. we just need to do our little bit every single day to make life a little easier. Just to, as the coda to what I was saying. And thank you. But quite frankly, as far as I... It's not a case of doing that. Just treat us like anybody else, for Christ's sakes. You know, it's... Oh. Yeah. We're not special. No, the point isn't that, that no one has prejudice. <laughs> the point is when you find prejudice within yourself, you do one of three things. You either turn it to a strength, remove it from your character, or, you know, minimize its effects upon yourself and those around you. If you can't do those three things, one of those, you're failing. And there are, unfortunately, a, a number of people who don't want to try and actually revel in that kind of trash. I don't like the word racism because black isn't a race. No. You know, me Mexican isn't a race. It's, it's prejudice. You're all... You're all, yeah, right. That's it. It's prejudice. It's bias. It's it's um, a lot of different things, but it's not. It's ba that base, that base fear of the unknown, right? I mean, I will admit and, I'm racist towards Americans, but well, you know that's okay. But we are saying still it all, out loud is the first. Race, to be fair, right? we're, we're racist towards each other. So it's... oh yes, we are. North versus yeah. south, east versus west, and yeah, you know hills versus flatland. It's east we have coast, so west many coast. Ways oh of race. mankind, thou that's art so tribal. Biggie, yes, Tupac. we are. It's all the same. Uh, anyway, we, uh, we are Coda. just stupid tribal little animals tearing at each other's throats. Oh, but can you know, you hopefully one day we'll evolve. Head, but, but honestly, we are the no. same as slap we were two thousand years ago. So I don't think we will. So anyway, 
Coda. I had some other stuff happen. And it's about trans stuff this week. And it was actually a little bit amusing. Um, it all seemed to happen just at roughly the same time, within a day of itself, you know? Um, this, yeah, I'm guessing he must have been about 15, 16, young lad, walked up to me and he had the frown on his face. And I recognised that frown. Now, I'm not trying to stereotype here, I, because heaven knows I'm the last person who should be allowed to. Um... But, but I've seen that frown on... The boy or girl frown? Uh, uh, no, it's 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 from somebody who's on the autistic scale. Oh, mm. gotcha. There's a particular frown, especially people who are less on the scale. It used to be called Asperger's. We don't call it that now because Asperger himself was a complete... Well, he was one and a complete one at that. Um, child experimentation and all that stuff. Yeah. So... Um, and I recognised the frown. I thought, okay. He says, excuse me. Yeah. Are you a sir or a madam? The boy or girl frown. I, that's a very polite thing. Exactly. <laughs> I turned around and yeah. said, I'm a madam. And it's absolutely fine. Don't worry. He's um, learned, ask for pronouns. It's and a then, good survival skill. Um, I got a little bit of, well, I don't call this abuse, a bit of teasing from a few small kids um and i know their mum so i just stood there with a big grin on my face saying oh you'll learn when you grow up great rejoinder that was um but just then the them following they're gonna get day, hair in their ears one of the guys mm. i'd had a word with came up to check on me every time he sees me now he comes to check to make sure he noticed the web uh, the body camera went good um and he must have said something to the people he was with, because next, next thing, these two people, his mates, come up and go, you're all right, they're calling me Rita's dead name. Uh, yeah. Don't you remember? We worked together. And it was... No. You've got the wrong person. <laughs> I mean, he was being as nice as pie. He, he really was. It was just the fact of no, we don't all look alike, you know. It's essentially you know, there's more than one of us. You know, I want to see a picture of you two together because you may actually look alike. I feel incredibly sorry for her in that case. <laughs> Dear God. So it's been a very stressful week. Um which is why last night I was like, I'm lonely, come and keep me company and you fucked off and you didn't. Um, I, sorry, sorry, I'm meant to have forgotten that, aren't I? Yes, that's right. Put it behind us now. Uh, but that might explain why I've been a little bit crotchety about the whole thing. Um, I hope it does. In my defense, I was working on IT issues at home all week. Well, you've been doing so much for Spelljammer. No, I mean oh. literal IT issues. Um, oh, really? Our sound, our sound school? bar for the TV, no sound, nothing. Mm. It just died out. I got, got that you. fixed. <laughs> you got home and had to work again. Oh, right. joy. Without telling me. Tyler got a new computer. Yep. Oh, you're uh, going to be going down to Carolina. On it. You're going to be going down to Carolina because you know full well Matey Boy down there is going to be turning around and going, oh, I can't get this fucking There's to work. no operating system on it. He can't get drivers to install. <laughs> um, he wants to put in a new version of Win newer version of Windows. I don't have a newer version of Windows. I told him, look, if worse comes to worse, put 11 on it, install the damn drivers, be done with it, smile and nod. He hates 11. I can't blame him. It's on is, the, isn't that a resource tail. hog, I heard? It was a bit of a resource hog. Well, I'm going with the... There's a trend with Windows builds. Um, the odd ones suck. It's the Star Trek movie syndrome. Oh, yeah, 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 you're it's right. The I nine, 95 sucks. Uh, Emmy like like sucks. Life. Vista sucks. Sucked. Seven Eight <laughs> blows. Oh, no, seven was all right. Eight was terrible. Seven yes. was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I'm with you and on this one, bro. now we're on to Windows 11, which is another odd number Windows build. 
98 10 SE and for XP me, so were brilliant. Windows 11 will probably suck too. But the new laptops come with 11 Home. I could have got Professional, but I don't know the difference between the two, and so I said screw it. I want it. 11 Enterprise. Oh, yeah? The business class one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I said fuck it. it. Got the I'll home one. Find it. You know, Apache Open Office seems to work around all the, you know, Microsoft Word and all that trash. So uh, I can have that. I'm a happy camper. And, and that's uh, one of those, what do you call it, open source and it's free and all that. So yep. you know, I still have well, an Office it's Android 20... Open Office now, too. Yeah. You know full well, he's actually brought a MacBook, don't you? Who, me? No, him. Oh, him. No, no, you know, me. he will have done. No, you know, no. You'll hear no. the scream. Mac is the devil. No Mac. No. No Mac if for I, you. If one I, year. If a MacBook arrives to my house, I swear there will be a YouTube video like that dad who shot the computer when his kid smarted off to him. No, I don't swear do that. God, I'll make one of those videos. Hang on a moment. Last <laughs> week it was what looked like a delicious milkshake, <laughs> but, tend, but ended up being cold coffee, which I approve of. This week, look. <laughs> Good job, Louis. A marshmallow. I haven't it's eaten yet. It's a handmade yet. marshmallow. There's nothing wrong That's with awesome. that. Why are you busting nice. on her for that? Because I haven't Not eaten there. and I don't have any. I had a you just a Reese's and a Kit Kat, Not yeah. yeah. Here, <laughs> now I'll have some beef jerky. Uh <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. We're um, all snacking and Auntie's hungry. Uh, by the way, She's angry. Without, angry. without giving me the explanation, could you tell me if you are capable of looking at... A vinyl record, an, an LP, long player. Oh, show my age. Now forty-five. Um, and you mean a full size. And um, shut up. I'm trying whatever. to think. Um, and shut up, Brian. And I do you know how to tell where the tracks change on a record? Yeah. Yes. Add yeah. Easily. Huh? What? For sale? Adam didn't. Oh, my sweet summer child. When he said this to me, Adam, I just... Adam, Adam, Adam. For all his adroit agility Adam. with technology. He's my chief scientist. I'm saying. I had to teach him how to... I had an 8-track when I was like 7. <laughs> my duster used to have an 8-track in it. Oh, my God. I inherited God. my uncle's old stereo, and that thing rocked until I was That's my like grandma's, 12. yeah. I, I'm with you, right? My Molly Hatchet CD in there. Bam! That, that A-track and just... Mm. It was a very my, good my album. Dad, my dad has a story about an A-track. He used to drive... He was Air Force, and he dri used to drive from the Air Base uh, in Jersey to where my mom lived in Connecticut. You don't have visit. an Air Base in Jersey. Well, New Jersey. Thank you. And uh, American and Jersey. It, he had to cross the George Washington the Bridge. Pale Real Jersey. Copy. And there was a trucker strike on. So they had parked their trucks so that one car could snake between them right. across the George Washington Bridge in New York. Yeah. And uh, and he had one eight. So it's, it was they were backed up for centuries. So he's and, playing the uh, convoy? <laughs> well, he had one eight track in the car, which was Anagata De Vida. <laughs> that would be great. Yes. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he played it for hours. <laughs> 15 minutes, 36 seconds per song. As he slowly... So a few years ago, we were... Um, he still bears a grudge against the George Washington Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your dad, but I immensely... I, I have an immediate, immense amount of respect and admiration for that man. So, yeah. <laughs> so he, we, um, I we don't even know what it was trip. he listened to, so... You don't know Inagada de Vida? No. What? We will we will educate you via YouTube. <gasps> yes, we will here momentarily. I swear to God. You can't, can't do it now, Spanky. It'll have to be afterwards. Um, yeah, we can't so, do it on there. So, uh, but it's a, like a 15-minute song. Most of which 15 is minutes, instrumental. 15 minutes, 39 seconds. Trust me, I, I know this I like for instrumentals, reason. depending on the, on the style. And, it's uh, not an instrumental. If it's got a good beat, I can boogie along to it. Ala Shatner. And, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, so we were on a family trip a few years ago, and we accidentally took the wrong navigation. And um, we hit the George Washington Bridge at dinner time, at rush hour, uh, with construction in the rain. And... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> he, he still bears a grudge. So it was not a particularly fun... Sorry. Hit my mic there. Not a particularly fun trip across the river. I don't mean... To, I'm not playing well upmanship or anything else like that, but I have a similar story. Um, <laughs> when I first moved over to England, the only cassette I had on me was the Doctor Who 25th anniversary record, which was essentially two sides full of Keth McCulloch music. And it was the only cassette we had to listen to for about three weeks. When you've got a mate of mine who can't stand Doctor Who, but humming the music because he had to put something on, there was nothing else to listen to. Uh, uh, so I get nightmares now about Keith McCulloch music. It's, it's, it's <laughs> like that. The other one was the um, only reason I know how long um, Inagad Davida is is that about 15 years ago during a period of that men long? behaving bad, yeah, <laughs> about of men behaving badly, we determined what what musical key accompaniment was the best to receive a, a dance to. Okay, 15 minutes 39 seconds. For the musically deprived, thank you very much. I am musically no deprived. Problem. Not not as much as Adam, but uh, though I was very impressed with the That's album. Strip club etiquette, right there. Power yeah. Club 90. economics, actually. Yeah. Um, the uh, it, like I said, it was 15 years ago, and we were men behaving badly. Hmm? The other time was I in to, January. I used to work as a bouncer in, in many of those bars. Hmm. The, the other time was in Jersey in January, and I was in my friend's car. I was a scrub. Um, and it was convertible, and it was January, but East insisted on having the roof down and going into a shop, and I was freezing. And he'd insisted on playing the Doctor Who sound effects tape very loudly. And so I'm sat Paul in the top car listening to Dick Mill's greatest hits, echoing around... Distillation Chamber. Stire robot, approach, scan, depart. Gallifreyan, Gallifrey and Staser, three blasts. That's some How am I right still there. alive? You know. Hey, do you want to know something? Mm. We've been going. How for are you little... still alive? Apart from how I'm still alive. Have you been draining the life force from unwilling victims? Mm. Again. That was my bet. Mm. I think you'll find that's a politician over here called Jacob Rees-Mogg. Mm -mm. um, or the Haunted Pencil, as he's known. Um, anyway, we've been going 50 minutes now, just on, and <laughs> we've got nowhere. Yeah, uh, yeah that's about but right. There's, not, there's more nowhere that's to go. Right, yeah. Anybody seen Picard <laughs> yet? Yes. Not the third season. A little bit? No, I actually... I've seen the first few episodes of the first season uh, and really enjoyed them, but it was television I was going to have to pay attention to, and I mm -hmm. wasn't in a place to. Pay I attention usually to. have it playing when I watch um, when I work on Foundry. See, I can't do so that. I, I like to concentrate on, on the one thing, you know. I can't have music I'm just playing. saying, Gates McFadden is a badass. Okay. Oh yeah, very much yes. so. When we obviously because they've not seen it, we can't really discuss it, but. My own opinion is I enjoyed it, this episode, Brian. It, it was hilarious. There we go. So, um, yeah. Well, at some point, we will talk I about huge, it at some stage. But... I was a huge uh, uh, Next Generation fan. Oh, you like this? And, uh... Seven of Nine had some of the best damn lines. Didn't she just? <laughs> you will be disappointed. Do you mean Commander <laughs> Annika Hansen? Do you mean Commander yeah, Annika yeah, Hansen? Yeah, I should, should say Commander Hansen. Mm. Oh, yeah. will uh, be revealed when you watch it. So, 50 minutes in. I can't believe it. We've done that again. What did you do? I don't know. My brain doesn't work. And now, from the world of BBC Television's Doctor Who, it's Doctor Who...
The possibility of a third Doctor Who has been shot in a badly edited, badly staged um, denouement of the previous story. And now, my very favourite TARDIS control room has been invaded by flat pack furniture. To Ikea in between... I'm just saying... MFI back in the day. Little Brian would have loved a room like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Pull a drawer, Mm -hmm. out comes a bed, I'm good. Yep. Um, Oh, yeah. And anyway, he collapses on this bed that appeared from nowhere out of the MFI cabinets. And Katie Manning gets to act her socks off. Um, we, there's no point hiding it. We're watching, we watched Planet of the Daleks. And this once, I did go back and rewatch it. Because I love Planet of the Daleks. It used to be my fa- It's a toss-up. It's between Planet and Day of the Daleks as to what my favourite Dalek story is. Um... But I absolutely adore this. The colour scheme of the Daleks in this is perfection. There is one Dalek that's slightly lighter than the others, and which cocks up slightly, if I'm honest with you. You know, they should be uniform. Um, Only you. What? Only you would notice that one Dalek is a lighter shade of Dalek grey metal than the other Daleks. Well... It's because, A, it stands out really well, um, and B, the other Daleks' colour scheme is the best they've ever had. The really, really incredibly dark ones. It's not the same as yeah, Genesis. Yeah. Uh, Genesis Daleks were more like the lighter coloured one from this. I just want to note one thing in yeah. particular. Do you want to go there on that is a really hell of a delay on the Twitch on stream. Twitch. Is it yeah. still it's still going between though, us it? and Twitch? There's a real big delay. Okay, I'll have to. I, I will have to look into that afterwards. It's cool. It's okay. Because I mean, we're not you, you know robot voicing anymore. Um, but. I did. Um, if you remember, I reinstalled this I think last week, and in, it may have put an automatic delay for to stop stream sniping. And the that's like. fine. So, yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about World of Warcraft. We'll talk about it afterwards. Um. We had a Buddha guy for that last time, right? Yes. So, I haven't got the music here. Um, I'll tell you what, I will go looking for the music whilst one of you talks about Planet of the Daleks. Who'd like to? Ooh. Any, any takers? This is democracy for you, isn't it? No, okay. this is roulette. Well, <laughs> it looked like Lilibet was talking, but I couldn't hear anything. Yeah, Lilibet, you might cutting off the start of your whatever you're you're okay. saying is that any better uh, we'll find yes. out am i still being cut off no not at the moment no. okay no, you're fine okay Thanks. you do talking a little bit you know what I need to why don't you something. tell us about the the dalek plan of the daleks so what happened was <laughs> <laughs> oh dear that was great how all the children start stories in class when what, they happened know they one, what, what happened to Once Upon a Time? <laughs> what happened was, uh, no, that's that's like you know I I've got I've been in trouble and I'm trying to explain myself. Uh, so Joe, you get caught out. Ha- yeah, <laughs> Joe has a really strong story here and spends a great deal <laughs> of it on her own. Um, <laughs> and they they solve the narrative device of her talking to no one. They don't solve it with. Uh, um, Doctor Who talking to a parrot on his shoulder or a cabbage or something. Uh, she's got a little recorder that she's talking basically to the kind of making a report, assuming the doctor will sometimes. She's making hear a log. It. Yeah. <laughs> she's talking and to the doctor. She's very brave because mm-hmm. he's collapsed and she's gone out to try and get help on this planet. And he just froze, yeah. Yeah. And she, um, she runs into these. Uh, Aliens, she doesn't really know who they are. They're mm-hmm. in a spaceship. Uh, yep. Some of them are not doing terribly well. They don't really exist. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've said that specifically for Sinister Adam and the new boy. We've got a thing about uh, Princess Hancock. I have so, a thing about their hair. Yeah, uh, yeah they mm. do have... I have no complaints about their hair. I have uh, a... They, 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 all look, they all have kind of the same wig, 
that is the same color as Katie Manning's hair. Um, she could be That's one of them. They run around in. Yeah, she nearly she's, was. She's looking very, very seventies in this. But the she's hairstyle got a changes. Good... Yes, she's got a good running around the planet outfit, though. Yes, I yeah. thought so. For once, yeah. Um, you know, no tiny little skirt for once. Uh, she dressed I think... for Rio. <laughs> I think she gets quite a few little costume changes through here too. Um, anyway, she is out. She runs into these guys. They say, "Well, we'll go help your friend, but you stay here because it's dangerous out there." And um, they go out to help the doctor, but also reconnoiter. And then we realize that they are being um, chased and and running away from not only invisible aliens who live on the planet, but also them. Daleks. Which is supposed to be the big reveal at the end of episode one, but you called it Planet of the Daleks and you kind of gave it away. Not big on the uh, whole cliffhanger thing there. Y you expected it, but yeah. Um, but I... I when they do come back with the Doctor, we have a different situation here than we did with the previous story where nobody believed the Doctor and nobody trusted him. Here, they are suspicious of him, but there's several incidences in rapid succession where the Doctor basically proves his expertise. He proves that he's someone from their mythology, because yeah. we've got lots of references to the, um, the original incident with the Daleks, and these are the long descendants of that, and that he, although he's not, say, loyal to the group, he's certainly willing to do things to protect them uh, and to help them get away from the Daleks, and so they, they start to trust him. Um, and they just about get back to the ship, and the Dalek blows it up with what he thinks is Joe on board. So, right. hang we on, have... Hang on, can we yes. move away a little bit from the plot, please? Yes, and go on certainly. to talking about it rather than... Well, I think that that brings it actually into that moment where he thinks Joe is dead and Joe thinks he's dead. She got rescued uh, by and, a bowl. And, and they, don't, they don't reunite till much later in the story. And I think that that moment of them both thinking the other's dead, but they're going to be brave and carry on anyway, mm -hmm. is really core to their characters. I mean, you, you can tell that they basically they've beefed Joe up a bit. I mean, they used to say that Doctor Who Companions didn't get any character development. I think Joe did, if I'm honest. Joe did. This is a good she episode. Grew up. This episode she, with she Joe grew she up. She got a lot of character development. We, we, we saw the character grow up during the show, to the point where Planet of the Daleks and, of course, the Green Death, she's almost an independent agent. Um... I like the fact that they tried to do that, quite frankly. Isn't the Green Death the next story? It's the next story, yeah. So this, her exploring on her own and her thinking the Doctor's dead and dealing with being on her own and not just sitting there and crying and screaming or whatever, like being an independent person mm. is, is kind of why she can leave in the next episode. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah oh, yeah. I think when she turns down the boy at the end, poor Lotep. She, because that's a good offer for her, right? And she's interested, but she has her own life and goals. How blonde and she would their realize, children have been? <laughs> oh, say again, oh, how blonde, blonde? Oh, yeah. Blondness, blonde. Um, but uh, I think that's where she actually really grows up at that moment and realizes, or starts to realize, she doesn't need the doctor. You know. Mm -hmm. She's an entity separate and independent of him and does not need him. A lot of the companions are kind of like, let's say, attaches, accoutrements or whatever for the doctor. These are my disposables. Or that's how they start. Yeah, they're all interchangeable and they're disposable and all that. But, you know, when you see one stand on their own, the best, I think, example of that probably is Bill. But, um, you know, for this is really good for Joe. It was, you know, mm -hmm. she really gets to grow here, and then in the next, why don't we watch that next? Because that would like let us talk about this more later. But you know, about, so we don't have to what, belabor the point about, now. But wait, hang on, whoa, what, what, watch what? Watch next? Green Death next. That'll be three poetry stories in a row. 
Do you want to? Sure, why not? I'm why not? to talk about Joe. All right, okay. More we'll, than, we'll do more that than then. The it's the Joe Grant farewell tour. Yeah, All right. Um, mm-hmm. we'll, do we'll do the Green Death Joe next Grant week. Arc. Okay. Well, it's, a, it's more about, yeah, companion character development, uh, you know, within the story arcs, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, no, I'm fine to do that. It saves me having to decide on something spur of the moment. I know minutes. that's what interests yeah. me in a little bit. <laughs> the rest, of you guys, like what you like, but I happen to find the, the green death things that definitely get me boring. Right. So, I think also, <laughs> and I, it's been years and years and years since I read the novelization. Um, but, and I know she turns down what's his name, um, the one whose mm-hmm. name looks like it's spelled backwards. Latep. Right? Yeah. Latep, right? Petal yeah. spelled backwards. Um. But I thought, I think in the book I have this vague memory of there being sort of romantic flirtations with the invisible guy. Is it Marat? The no. Biz- I'm bad on names. And the sp- that's names what, West of the Spirit on? Yeah. No, there, there was nothing like that. No. This okay. is a Terran okay. Sticks novelization. It was nothing like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it was Ian just- Marta, I'd start to believe it. But no, it's uh, I, it just always I, I had this vague memory. And so clearly it, it is an incorrect memory. Uh, but it, maybe just because it's just such a caring moment hmm. oh, yeah. when when it's taking care of her and it, there's no reason to. There's a wonderful moment when they her and Pertree meet back up and it, will you excuse me a moment. I think I need to have a word with my assistant and she She's babbling. Katie does a wonderful babble. She's so good. And right at the end of it, just as they go off screen, and then I was rescued by a bowl. And it's <laughs> just, it's perfect, Joe. It's, oh, dear me. I mean, if you go back to um, Frontier in Space briefly, where Joe's covering for the Doctor, who's doing his dangerous spacewalk thing. And mm-hmm. she's mm-hmm. basically get rattling on and on and on. A lot of that was just Katie. She's, you know, yeah, she's just keeping the master occupied, right? But that's yeah. the actress just riffing on her own, right? Yeah, man. She's, that was her, like, on the spot making it up? She's, um... Katie is lovely as a person. She's absolutely lovely. But the one thing a lot of people don't get to see or realise is just how sharp a cookie that woman is. They don't see beyond the first impression. She's incredibly sharp. Um, totally unlike Joe, quite frankly. Uh, yeah, no. Um, and he's cool she could add lip something like that. That's amazing. You've got oh, to yeah. be smart for that. Well, you can't we, just we, pull that we out. We add lip you know? this. All this is added. Yes, that's All true. jokes of scripts aside, she said, checking. Um, <laughs> I don't know. The the one I got from the monkey says to just expand on this. Nod and smile and say, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we also get some really lovely scenes in the prison cell. Yes. Between mm-hmm. the doctor and the thaw. It's a moment of charm. Um, that's that, Another that's bunch of prison cell scenes, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, codal. Codal? Uh, Codal. Sure. Yeah. Uh, th- their names on here did not stick in my head at all. And Wikipedia doesn't Never help. Do. Um, but there's... Yes, that, Mrs. Sutherland. <laughs> Don't worry about it. That nice little moment of him saying, of the doctor saying, yeah, you are brave. It's... Yeah. It's absolutely okay to be terrified, to be scared, and to do what needs doing anyway, and that's bravery. Yes. Spot on. It's a petty yeah, moment. They're in the child. middle of a Dalek prison, for God's sakes. You should if be they, scared. <laughs> if any point is, you know, it's okay to be terrified, it's now. <laughs> then is okay. That is perfectly acceptable, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. with Daleks that color. Oh, my God. Terrified me. Well, you see, I watched this on original transmission in black and white. And b- white corridors, incredibly dark Daleks in black and white, make for some fascinating um, viewing. It really, it just brings the menace right up with them. Um, that's why I was always happy that episode three never got returned properly. And for years, they just had a black and white version 
which was slightly filmy grain and everything. And I thought, that is brilliant. That's wonderful. Then they went and discovered how to expurge chromodots and colorify things. At... Which is a fascinating process. It, it, well, well, oh, yeah. so is paint drying. But, um... <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> no, no, I, I do. Pay, I watch paint dry a lot. <laughs> yeah, you do. You just like inhaling the fumes. No, no, I just like turning on the uh, the paint mixer and making you wonder what the hell is going on. What is that weird little noise, right? Hmm. Anyway, um. Well, no one's mentioned it yet, so we're going to have to wait and see. Carry on, Brian. Um, one wait of my things about this, apart from Joe, you know, Joe. growing as a co companion and coming into her own, because you can see where it's going, and you know she's going to leave after that. She doesn't need the doctor anymore. Um, it's the it's how the planet is set up. The ice volcano in oh, that was a big one. And ice lava. That came from like somewhere. And while it doesn't exactly jive with, you know, stellar physics and everything, it's a good idea. And then getting the Daleks, you know, covered in ice lava. That was neat. See, your your favorite Daleks are frozen in ice forever. You could take one, stick it in an ice tray, put it in, in the freezer, and you will have an What do you think these cinematic... lollipops are that I've been promising people? Exactly. You can bring it out and show it to everyone. Look, this is my authentic. <laughs> no, when Character Options brought those boys out, Sinister and I just went, Ah, a wooga, a wooga. I remember. Yeah. I saw you two go a wooga. Wooga, a wooga. <laughs> They're my favorites. Leave me alone. I'm elderly. The idea, the idea of Daleks being invisible is terrifying. It is. Yes. yes. Now, I, I have mean, to admit, um, I'll be moving on to something like this shortly, but... It's interesting to note that the planet's called Spiridon rather than Evisithon or something. <laughs> because Terry Nation, Terry Nation, um, or Terry fucking Nation, take your pick, um, he used to have a knack of naming planets after disasters that had happened to them. So Iridius was an incredibly dry planet. Didn't used to be. Terrible disaster. Um, Desperus. It's where the desperate prisoners were left. Can you see where this is going? Can you see where this is yes. going? Um, Typical 70s sci-fi. Well, I, I, once we've all had a word, I'm going to do a Top of the Pops countdown of Terry Nation tropes um, that you will find in um, this story, because this is essentially a retelling of the very first Dalek story, but with twiddly mm -hmm. bits. But um, anyway, please continue. Either oh, Brian or Spanky. Brian Hello, going, Spanky. Uh, I, I'm, the, I'm Hello. good. Oh, are you done? Okay. Yeah. The fun fur is always great too. The fun fur in this in this story. Oh, yeah. I love that fur. It's a beautiful color. Yeah. It's a good color. It's um, a wonderful I would color. I think it's snuggy like that. Sure. It they doesn't got their exactly colors blend right into in the this. jungle. No, it does not. Right. No, it does. You figure. Guys who could turn invisible would have a better but idea of them. how to mesh into the background, but it's, apparently it's, not. Yeah, that, the whole point of them wearing those clothes is that they don't blend into the background. They're forced to wear them by the Daleks. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought that was how they protected themselves against the cold at night, by wearing those furs. Uh, I don't think it actually gets mentioned. It might do. Uh, I know yeah, you yeah. got the, the Plane of Stones, which um, it acts as overnight storage heaters um but no they're, they're the daleks enforce all spiridons have to wear those robes so they can be seen which is ridiculous really because daleks can see invisible creatures or they should be able to unless they're red you would figure maybe this is where they got their technology well quite mm -hmm. light wave sickness mm -hmm. eh mm. 
So uh, there were a lot of good things. Uh, there was one annoying thing. Oh, hello. About the third time that one guy betrays his people again, and the West. captain is still like giving him chances. I'm like, okay, this episode has its own West. Please kill him. <laughs> it's Princess Hancock. He doesn't <laughs> even exist. Perfect. This is where West evolved from. Right there, that character archetype. That's West. Poor Prentice Hancock. Just saying, that's to tie that to Space Above Beyond later. That's West. I, I, mm -hmm. I like Prentice Hancock. I don't care what anybody else says. <laughs> I like him. No, people he's say he's everybody's he really favorite bad actor. Actively dislikable. So he did a very good job acting. Um, you know, not no complaints or anything about his job. I just thought that was funny that that it was written into the story that he kept getting all of these chances. You know, like mm -hmm. that because. Do you think they go At back to the point. thing and go, he did it again? Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> what? Uh, all right, so again? Bullet that really? Guy. Mm. I mean, again? quite frankly, Taron's got it correct. They've got it. They've, sorry. They've got a thing so many days since what? he betrayed people. And <laughs> yeah. How many days since he can stare betrayed us, right? Or whatever his name is there. Yeah, like, Actually, here's, here's the thing. Spanky. Situation like mm -hmm. that when you were in the Marines. Yes. If, who was right? Taron or Weber? Should they have gone on the attack, or were they right to keep... The officer was right. He's in command, he's giving the orders, you shut up and follow the order. If you disagree with the order, you follow the order, and then report it as an unlawful order. So do but you think, you do as not, a matter of... Unless he said he killed somebody or something, like an as unarmed a matter of strategy, to shove it up his poop shoot, but... As a matter of strategy, did Taron have it hmm? right? Or did Weber have it right? As a, just as a matter of strategy... I think Weber had it right, not Taron. So... He was, he was being smart, he was being tactical... And the boy just wanted to rush in and get blown so up. So Taron got stupid. it right. The, the leader had it. Yeah, whichever Taren, yeah. whichever one was in charge, that guy I had it right. I just wanted the to other see guy, what your viewpoint on that was. Because it's a military The young guy viewpoint. was a dipstick, so, right? Fair enough, then. Uh, poor old Prentice Hancock. Noonan's going to laugh oh, at I'm all about when I tell him. Yeah. Oh, yes, we've got, we've got a visit next Saturday from uh, the new boy. That's... Um, Very cool. Actually, it'll be a laugh. Since mm -hmm. he's coming down, Adam's turning up. And um, we're going to go to the house where Harry the Grout used to live. Genial Harry Grout, in fact. You need to watch Porridge. Elizabeth possibly already has. Anyway, Porridge. just to remind you of a few things, and just so you understand, um, I didn't pre-warn you about this because I'd forgotten. I'm about to play some music and do a voiceover, okay? You won't be able to hear the okay. music, unless you're on Twitch as well. But so uh, anyway, Nary Nahan, tropes. People have called this Terry Nation's greatest hits. Is it? Okay, in at six. There's a fault with the TARDIS. At number five. The Doctor and the Companion split up. There's a Dalek city in a jungle. At three. There's a Dalek at the end of episode one. Doesn't matter what the title is. There's a Dalek at the end of episode one. Still at number two. It's basically, it's killing a Dalek and taking it out of the top and getting inside it and pushing it around in the city. However, we've got a new entry straight in at number one. It's Plague! I think that one's going to be hanging around for a long time. And that's top of your Mary Nahum Pops. There we go, right. <laughs> Sorry, that was done very much on the spur of the moment. So, um, that's important. I need to hide that. I'd written all that. But uh, uh, I should have planned that. That's the sort of thing... Back in the audio podcast, I would have spent an entire evening creating. It's uh, mm -hmm. how incredibly frustrating. Ah, oh, well, there we go. Did you enjoy Planet of the Daleks, all of you? I did. Yeah. I do think, like the last one, it's a little too long. But it was a good episode, well, a good story. Okay. Yes, it retreads so many things, but it does it with a certain verve. Um, I've got to admit, watching it on the Blu-ray on a big TV, you can see some mistakes. 
like production crew and shooting off the set and and box files for some reason holding up the back of the TARDIS control room wall. Um, and did you bring enough to share? Yeah, I got, got enough for everybody. Hand it out. I don't have enough hands. I'm missing some. We've done the whole American and food thing, haven't we? We've already discussed yeah. that. Do I yeah, have to I get do. another box of Twinkies? <laughs> See, I am not. Now, now, now Eddie's no longer here with us. Um, that sounds wrong. He's not on the show. Um, I um, Careful, Icarus. The, um, I'm not actually a big fan of Twinkies. Oh, it's, it's just not my cup of tea. Spanky's quiet as well. Bite your tongue, hooker. Sorry, if I'm we ever get up, to Gallifrey myself. one, all of us, we have to bring boxes of Twinkies and just pass them around. Yes. No one watches this. It's not going to make any sense to anybody. It's okay. It'll it be matter. funny for us. It'll be funny to us, right? That's the only thing that matters. Do we amuse ourselves? Yes. Screw it would yells. amuse me that you've no wasted offense, your money to like any that. audience we may garner, but we're However, just here to amuse ourselves. <laughs> However, <laughs> what we might do, and we've got nearly two years to plan this, is a group cosplay. Mm. Yeah, I can see that really going in your head there. Hmm. You see, the thing are, is... Are, the, are you reading are, our are, thoughts are, are, right now? No. However, I'd also it's point out it's, safer this way. It, 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 it's also a good chance you could get away with wearing your Plague Doctor outfit as well for, for one of the days. Mm. Oh, oh! If I if I can wear my Plague Doctor outfit, I'm there. But well, there was a, a serious sort of photograph. There's a guy turned up as Vorg from Carnival of Monsters, and That's somebody else is a Drashing. Drashing, <laughs> yeah, that was great. It's that remarkable. Was great. The talent on display. On the sh on show, it's just oh god! I was born at the wrong time. Such a labor of love. Back when I was that age, you weren't allowed to cosplay. You can see Adam the Savage's the sad. TED Talk on cosplay really says it all. Oh, that's interesting. Does it? I haven't seen that yet. I'll have to look it up. Who's Adam Savage? The guy from Mythbusters. She doesn't know. She's never seen the show. Yeah. She oh. has a pops. Pop She's too much of a snob to watch anything American. We all know this. I have found a lot of television nowadays just to be crap. And I'm talking <laughs> British TV as well. Please understand that. As a result, I hardly watch any live television. Um, that's okay. Mythbusters is no longer live. You can watch it. No. Yeah. Off, like, I don't know, 10, 15 years or whatever now. Yeah, um, uh, but uh, no, I am. Um, yeah, I am a snob. I will admit. I admitted it to Adam this afternoon. I am a snob. I've got nothing, no justification to be a snob about anything, but I can be snobby. It's a failing, I'm afraid. I know. That's why you won't watch Buck Rogers. Yeah. I watched mm -hmm. Buck Rogers on the original transmission. I don't need to see it again. So did I. We're not watching Buck Rogers. However, there is something we're going to be watching because uh, we're coming to the end of uh, Space Above and Beyond, aren't we? Yeah, we got mm -hmm. three after I find this. Something else. I know what the something else is. It's just a case of getting it to you. Oh, dear God. Are you um, trying to do Space 1999 again? We can make a little bit watch tomorrow, people. No, I mean... No, I Ooh, there we go. No, no, I have, the, I have the complete series. I watched cool. it when it was on Nickelodeon back in the... Yeah. There you go. I cool. loved it. Hang Four o'clock in the afternoon. Are we talking the nineteen seventies tomorrow, people? We are. Yeah. Wow. The, That's what they had in the eye and the hand and the. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Although we watched Dave and I started watching, and it's really the first few episodes are really slow. They, yes. They hadn't hit their stride yet. Once they introduce Mike, the entire show goes downhill. I blame him. It's Madge Arwell's fault. 
She's his grandmother. Oh, we so- had this discussion. We did. Okay, I- the minute Mike shows up, the show goes to shit. That's true. I-, I I hadn't rewatched that Christmas episode in a really long time. And this past Christmas, uh, when I was up with my family, um, my-, my sister was like, I want to watch a Christmas Doctor Who that isn't too, too scary for the little kids. And um, so we put on that one. The Wedding and, of River um, Song. Uh, they don't have enough background for the Wedding of River Song yet. Uh, okay. yeah. They they might now, but they hadn't then because they're just really getting to the age where it's not too too scary. Voyage for of them. the Dark. Doctor Mysterio. Um. Well, we we oh, started Mysterio. with um, the the tenth Doctor's Christmas one with the spinning Christmas trees and the Santas and the. You know, because they're pretty cartoony villains. Um, and like then, and whatnot, right? Easy to yeah, relate to kids, yeah. Especially. And then we watched, then we watched that one, the the Madge one, and I had forgotten what her plot was about. <laughs> and I have to say, it hit me a little harder than I expected. Um, it being what it is, and all. Um, it doesn't excuse her I, behavior. I had to walk out of the room for a little while. Uh, so Madge Arwell is responsible for that as well. I'll tell Sinister. I think she's very brave. Um, and then... Oh, she fools you. Uh, then we showed them the first... Uh, the 11th hour, which is... That season's my favorite season uh-huh. of the new series. Hands down favorite. Um, and, and just a really good entry point. Hands down, um, elbows out, knees going everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Big chin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Banana. Yeah. So it's now now they've like by the end of when I left, <laughs> I was there a couple of days and um, they'd watched pretty much that whole season. <laughs> Fair enough. This is good. And then stuff. I told my sister, did like, you spoil you have it to for be... them? No, 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 no. I don't want to spoil things for them. Did I, did you, I hope you, you left, still left by ginger? turning around going, oh, by the way, before I see you next time, silence will fall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's the uh, the 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 one actually with the don't blink right the the angels one yeah um not not the silence one but uh, is the one that I use to introduce it to my classes because you don't need any background whatsoever no except this is a time travel machine that's it that's yeah. all you need and the, and, the uh, doctor's hardly in it at all so. right and the doctor will never be a ginger that's just it. the Merlin not incarnation yet. is so, there is an incarnation yeah, that, that was Merlin. He was ginger. All the wizards are are him in fairy tales. Ah, I will, Shall we go and move on to watching it back though? Sorry, um, the because I have the Blu-ray version, and the behind the sofa on this one is phenomenal. Do 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 do. Yes, Kate, the Katie Manning, um, and John Levine, and. Sorry, on, you can do this. I'm head. not going to help you. You can do uh, this. No, I can't. Anyway, the other one Richard from Franklin. That's him. There we go. That's Daddy wouldn't him. buy me a schoolboy. And they're uh, they're just lovely together. And she absolutely sets the tone. Um, and it just completely naturally sets the tone for the three of them together. And it's That's it's cool. brilliant. If, if normally I'm like oh, whatever, but that. If you haven't watched it on the DVD. Brilliant. I have, Behind but I can't stand John Levine. The man's an ass. Oh. I don't know him personally. I've never met him. He's an ass. Um, <clears throat> hence the ongoing end of credits to Raid, which Sinister started, and I didn't know why. I know why. Um, right, so now we're an hour and a half into the show. <laughs> Here, tell us about Big Finish. Let's do Big Finish, yes. There we go. Hooray. I'm going to eat some beef jerky. <laughs> ah, dear. The t- well, a tenth Doctor Who, played by Christopher Eccleston. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I said yeah, that just he, to make Dominic He does a really good doctor. We know it's the ninth Doctor, but he really is the tenth. Um, sure, sure. Um, well, it's the, it's the new ninth Doctor Big Finish box set. First one set in a charity shop. And it's against the colour red. The second one um, is set in a gentleman's club, mostly. 
Uh, and the third one is set on a planet that's been colonized. Uh, it's only the three stories, count them. <sighs> and like I said, now we're giving you a week, a week's grace between the show being released and us reviewing it. We, we, we are going to talk spoilers. Um, if the conversation goes in that direction, it may not do. Um, but just be aware. And the first one, basically, I absolutely adored it. It's it's the Doctor trying to organise a, a very small team of locals because the aliens have invaded the local charity shop using the colour red, which is a great, great concept. I absolutely love it. Uh, I kept thinking of the hula -voos. Um Super intelligent. Shade the shade of the colour blue. blue. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you, Lilibet. Um I, I wasn't left hanging there. I'm touched. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I know my hitchhikers. And, yeah. and coming up, I know my PG Woodhouse. Uh, oh, yes. We'll, we, we will hit on that as well. Oh, that was a deep reach. Good job. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, oh, it was blatantly bloody That obvious. was good. Right from the very start, but we'll get to it. Um, I thought this, I mean, for a start, this whole box set is a hell of a lot better than last week's box set, I thought. But it's a different thing. These are full cast audio plays rather than stories being read. Um, Eccleston finally, yeah, he, he, he has finally refound his feet. It took him some time, to be fair. But now we're listening to The Ninth Doctor. And it, it's worked. Um, I... I don't know about you guys. I thought possibly there was one too many guest cast members. And I, I didn't think, think so. I think it could have done without Frank Skinner. Hmm. Who played Pete, the guy who lost the cat. Yeah, who I did not. I, I don't know why I didn't clock him as elderly until I listened to the behind the scenes stuff. And they were like, oh, he's an elderly man. I'm like, really? Because that's not how I clocked him at all. Um, yeah, but the, um, the thing about Frank Skinner, and bless you, Frank, you are one hell of a comedian and incredibly laid back with it. You're not much of an actor, though, love. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I feel terrible saying that because he, he plays lonely in Big Finish's Callan range. Um, I'm I think he did a smashing job as lonely. It's. Um, I thought this could have been. They could have written the character out without any real trouble, okay. without it affecting anything. Quite frankly, um, the charity shop boss is a caricature, essentially. Push lady, you know, the Village Green Preservation Society. Uh, she's, I think she's a little more Miss Slocum. I think she's a little more like mm. she's presenting herself as more posh than she actually is, um, or maybe. Um, oh, she what's is her name? Keeping up appearances. Um, uh, Hyacinth Bouquet. There's there's mm. that sort of element of I have to be, I have to be even more because I'm actually not. Somebody likened me to Hyacinth the other day. I can't remember why. Oh well. Um, I, I, I mean, we've all worked with someone like that. Oh God, yes. The airs and graces. Essentially, um, the look at me. Years and years ago, I, I worked in a shop with a lady um, whose whose name was Joan, and and we would afterwards go. We had a Jonarific day. <laughs> <laughs> I've. I, I think we've all had our fair share of complete asses. Um, Unfortunately, they've usually been been in charge. What did you make of? Lugger. What did you actually make of the story, and and certainly the central conceit of the, of the aliens? Because we've seen similar aliens in the well, I say seen, well we did similar aliens in the past with the Vardens who could travel along any waveform. Mm -hmm. In in um, invasion of time. So this is essentially extrap extrapolating from that and saying, well, the spectrum is a waveform up to a point. Therefore, yeah, go on. You can disagree with me. Um, I, I'm probably getting my words mixed up, but it's a similar. No, sort it's, of it's vibe. sorry. Uh, what I got in my head was spectrum is green. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Dum 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 dum. Exactly. Um, Where are they when you need them? They're quite. not in the charity shop. Ah dear. Remember, Captain Scarlet is indestructible. You are not. Do not upset him. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, what do I you do, think of that central conceit? I think it's a. I think it's a really good science fiction concept. That. Um, that light is, un, you know, traveling. The one thing that I thought they were going to talk about that they didn't was that, because they talk about light going in waves, right? But not only is light a waveform, it's also a, what's the word I want? Particle. That's it. Particle. Particles. Well, I was going to say, no one mentioned photons. Yeah, well. and I thought we might, you know, the doctor might say something like, oh, it's doing this, but also it's that simultaneously. Mm -hmm. something. But maybe that was just mm. too too much. Uh, but it's a really good, proper science fiction concept. And then a great little setting. Um, and the Ninth Get Doctor tight. does this. Yeah, this is, this is a Ninth Doctor thing. Getting stuck in a place with ordinary people mm -hmm. who then he has to, he's simultaneously kind of annoyed with. And has to inspire to be brave and clever. And then the doctor leaves and then they've got to figure out what to do with themselves. Spanky, you know? follow that. Well, he's just not there now, am I? Can you hear me, love? Uh, are you talking to me? That's Spanky, yes. You're very soft to me, yes. That's Sorry, because darling. I love you. I know. Okay. Um, it's not yes. that healthy kind either. It's that really good kind. Now you know, then, you people too much money flashing blade, remember? Flashing blade. A week at the donkey show and trying you wanna, not yeah. to do My anything that could get me in trouble. Um, so, no, no. Um, yes, what did you make of this particular story? Uh, I liked it. I thought it could have been subtitled The Ginger Episode. That would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would have been cool. That would have been a good, like, working title, I think, but, you know, <laughs> we're good, good like that, but um, I love that the little old lady paints the TARDIS red. That was, like, on time, and then she paints herself red, and she just goes batshit at the end, and just goes nuts. I'm like, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> so I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun listening to it. I really enjoyed it. So. Oh, okay. And I, I like that, not that, well, since we can throw spoilers, that they bring these, this same... Uh, I don't want to say villain, but, you know, antagonist back later in another story that the arc continues. You skip them in the middle story and then you finish with them in the final story. And that works out very well. Let's move on to that second story then, shall we? Because I'm keeping an eye on the clock. Um... Yeah, uh, the, the, I'm not sure we skip it, though, because green is opposite on the color wheel. Uh, mm -hmm. That is actually a point. That is raised. The color we see the most of, right. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, color blindness is raised. It's a point that is raised. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, and everything had and, color in it. That was the theme. Yes. And the second one is, is green. Yeah, exactly. So the mm -hmm. second one, has anyone ever read The English Way of Death by Gareth Roberts? Uh, I'm not plugging it, but what? this is... I didn't hear you. The English Way of Death. It's a Doctor Who mm -hmm. book. Um Ed, which is the fourth Doctor in the second Romana and Canine um, visiting Edwardian London and then the South Coast. Basically, Bertie Wooster yeah. um, is looking for a new man to help him, a gentleman's gentleman. And, he finds uh, a Jeeves in the Doctor. And the Doctor turns up. And straight away, you, they pay tribute to Woodhouse by saying, are you good at coming up with plans to marry off old aunts? Yes. I, <laughs> and it's a case of, brilliant. You, you wore it on yeah. the sleeve. This is not one to be taken seriously. This is a lot of yeah. fun with a lot of caricatured stereotypes. Posh 1920s people, don't you know? Um, and you Woodhouse, yeah, right? Essentially Woodhouse. Yeah, probably yeah, not as the, funny as Woodhouse. Fun, to be right? fair. But no, but it, it, you know, it, it, you knew what you were listening Woodhouse to. to enjoy it, it would help. But you know, it, it Woodhouse was good it. because Woodhouse played with stereotypes. Yeah, and, and that was his, his work seriously. 
plus it, like the, the, he took his craft seriously but he doesn't take the world hmm? seriously well that's right. the whole point exactly. of this thing it's a case of anybody remember that time that london got a load of plants walking through it and all the young men got married to them <laughs> that one's not come up in the history books um it, it's a daft premise but it's a daft play and it's great because of it quite it's nice can be fun moments um that they the plants are eulily aren't they yes and mm-hmm. uh in woodhouse um there's a very similar eulalia i think I think Eulalia mm-hmm. is the plant yeah. here, and Eulalie is from Woodhouse, uh, which is the name of the underwear company that the wannabe dictator runs. <laughs> um, Hang on, is that Aunt Agatha? Um, no, 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 it's... Um, sorry, you uh, said you want to be one like of dictator. The black shorts, oh, Oswald Mosley? Yeah, it's one of those. It's it's one of those. Um, and uh, the idea of all the young men suddenly falling in love with... with it, is just constantly happening, you know. Um, Birdie, uh, Birdie's usually immune to it, but like Bingo, every five minutes in a different story has a different girl, and he's over it by the next day. Basically, the men uh, in this have no chins. Yes, it's English aristocracy. Uh, and and you have the lovely girl dressed completely unconvincingly as a boy yeah. that none of the boys can but, know, can realize. But the good thing is, Big Finish don't try to play. It. As though yeah. she is a man, they play it as right from the start. You know, yes, and yes, uh, and I always, I always enjoyed those. You know, girl dresses as a boy and goes and has adventures kind of stories. Um, I can see you and, doing that as a kid. Uh, Lumberjack yeah. shirt. Yeah, I was never. Um, by the time I didn't look like a boy anymore, it, there was going to be way too much intervention needed for anything to be convincing. <laughs> um. <laughs> Help me. Um. I thought it was funny. The guy is like almost gay, but then he like hooks up with essentially a cross dresser. And I'm like, well, there's finding your happiness, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He seems kind of undecided or a little confused, but it all works itself out in the end. That's Woodhouse. It, it, exactly. Hell. It all yeah. works itself out in the end. Don't worry about it. It's cool. Yeah, so yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, that was perfect. There's, there's, absolutely, there's nothing huge to be taken away from this play. This is one you just well, no, back and, it, it was and, and, Honestly, and it was a good insert enjoy. between the two very serious stories. Yeah. And it well, was a I didn't good think step back the first one from the was, tone. I thought the tone of the first one wasn't as serious as, serious as the tone of the third one. Because obviously well, it's opening the set up. I'm so there glad they didn't tension. start doing a load of time nonsense. I'm very pleased about oh, that. No, I've been no. sick to death of Big Finish no. doing that of late. Um, no, but there was a lot more tension and a lot more of that sort of nervous energy, I guess you could call it, in the in the first one. A lot more of that sense of constriction in your time to ha- act and things like that. Whereas in the, in the middle one, while there was, it was more tongue-in-cheek. And then we get to the third one, and that one's like the deadly serious sort of one. You know, and so it builds and then it's, you know, it's it's a waveform. Again, we're talking about light and colors and things like that. Right. Well, light Please travels in a wave it, and the wave it's pattern is to... this. And so we had the first peak, then the valley. And now the next peak is higher. Right. Because please, our wavelength please, is increasing. Was... Please do not say it's building to a crescendo because I will slap the back of your legs. I would never say it's building to a crescendo unless I wanted you to slap me, which I admit is often. Yes. But. Generally not while we're talking about Doctor Who. No, to be fair. Um, Brain, do working. Right, so there's a colony (laughs) out in space. And the colonists, well, they've all but completely vanished. Uh, There's only about three or four left. The shadows move when you don't look at them. It's the Vashta Narada. However... There's something else. There's something else. It's the colour red again. Same people. Uh, the Vermeer, wasn't it? Sorry. Vermeer, something like that. Yes. Um, it's close to vermin, but it's not vermin. Um, the Vermeer, mm-hmm. we'll call them. Um, uh, just a tiny like fraction pictures, right? of it got out of the trap and eventually met with the Vashta Narada... And they got on really well. 
because now they can feed in the daytime and they can feed in the nighttime. You know, so they've got it made. Um, I have not listened to the last 20 minutes of this, so I don't know how it will get sorted out. Um, Mm. But all I know is I was really enjoying. This is the best uh, Ninth Doctor set I think Big Finish have released so far, in my own opinion. Ninth Doctor, but yeah. Because I haven't been that impressed by them up till now. But what did you make of the third one, Lily? Lily? It's gone to Lily now. Jesus, how did that happen? Oh, that's the Buccaneer. Sorry, go on. Um, I, I really liked this. I liked the setup. Uh, the idea of doing an invisible monster on audio is a great idea. Um, because you get all the fun of things sneaking up on you um, without... It doesn't feel cheap or... You know, we're, it feels proper scary. Um, and I like that the the themes that they've been building of love and loss mm-hmm. and sacrifice from the first story into the second and now into the third of the power of love, the power of um, romantic love, the power here of familial love and sacrifice, it, it, that really built across all three stories. And we it's see so great payoff. to have another lit major on the freaking show. Oh my god! Ooh. My, my nipples can fucking cut glass. I'm just saying. Can you more detail than that? But <laughs> damn! Thank God. Oh, mm. I'm so happy. <laughs> I've just remembered finally what it was I was going to do after that. Okay, just so I can get the address. Mute right. Spanky. Boop. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Interesting. The world's greatest. That was the one thing I wanted to say about this, the whole show. It's been, yeah, thank, thank you a little bit. Oh, my God. Oh, you idiot. It's bestest is not greatest. Sorry, I've got to do a plug for someone. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you broken? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. That's how we like him. I broke the Brian. Sorry, man. Oh, my for fuck's sake, Siobhan. <laughs> it happens. Uh, every once in a while. I try not to do it as often now. <sighs> you used to do it all the time. Trying to That's okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I I want I want Siobhan to give me credit for not mentioning splorching at least oh my God. this long. Do you know how long Not on um, the flashing blade. Exactly. Not on the I blade. Swore to myself, I, I won't have it. it. Until someone else mentioned it. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have any of that on the blade. I'm sorry. I do have some standards. And no, I still don't know what it is. And I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> after all these years, I have stupidity. avoided... It's ridiculousness. I've completely avoided anything to do with overpositors. Um, I don't know what any of it means. So, uh, yes. Uh, Please continue. What did we think of the box as a whole? I liked it. And I want to say this. I like it especially for this reason. Because they introduced the best canine character since K9. Yes, to the talking dog. I want one of those. I want two of those. I want the whole damn pack. I'm just saying. That was a freaking great dog. Oh, my God. He was a great I said the the awesome. companion character is a, a kid who is red green colorblind. Yeah. And is losing uh-huh. his vision. And this is his seeing eye dog, who's also his best friend and protector. Right. Uh and kind mm-hmm. of saves the day. And um, the dog's also colorblind too, because he's yes. dog, but yeah. So it's, mm-hmm. it, we it's like the way really it's been thought great out. Great idea. Then. We like it the way that it's it been great thought idea, about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well very organized. Um good hard Some sci-fi. Very intelligent concept, planning going too. on there. Yeah. Right then. Living light. You got to love that. Come on. When you can put like a life into something else, something that's essentially inanimate, it's a it's an essential component for life for us, but you know, light, light as a life of its own. That's awesome. Okay, I'm going to have to try and remember that so I can quote it when I contact Big Finish. Use that mm-hmm. as the quote. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> do you know what we're doing next week? Sure. Well, we know we're doing the Green Death because I've been told we are. Um, Green Death? 
Next week, I've got to try and be more professional than I normally am. Oh, you know, we did not talk about Callan. We haven't finished yet. Okay, I'm just saying. We, 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 well, we, we're we're only about, halfway we through the week? show, like, Spanky. Don't forget Callan. I always okay. do a round of what we're doing Doctor Who wise. Oh. In case some people yes. turn off, you see, after the Doctor Who stuff. Um, Retta's away this weekend, isn't she? Hmm? Retta's away this weekend, isn't she? No, she was busy. That was, that's, well, yeah, that's what I mean. That's why she's not in chat. I watch out for these things. Um, so, yeah, i got to be more professional for next, on next week's review. Why? The new boy has a new box set out. Oh. It's the first Doctor Adventures Demon Song. Um, two stories, Demon Song and the Incheton Incident. And I need to listen to this so that I can talk to him and tell him what I think of it. And I, I've been restraining myself because if I listen to it too early, I'll forget most of it for the show. So, I um, yeah. So, like I say, uh, first Doctor Box set next week with the new boy. Um, hmm. See, it's a bit different from the first box set. The first box set, I was, I, I'd stood up and I'd basically gone, no, 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 no. You guys have got it all wrong. This guy knows what he's doing, and that was great. Now, though, we're good mates. And so I need to pull back a little bit to try and be objective rather than subjective, if that makes sense. You know, I need to take the friendship out of it. And, I mean, I never say anything profound about these things anyway. But um, I've I got to see how to play it. It's like if Stephen comes up to uh, Hooverville this year as a guest. Um, I'll probably be the one interviewing him and it's a case of, right, I've got to rein it straight back in. It, we can't just carry on like normal on stage. It's got to be. So, um, but then again, I had Rufus Hound last year. <sighs> that was an experience. In a really, really good way, but it was an experience. Um, so, yeah. First Doctor Box set next week. Sorry. Um... <clears throat> No professional jealousy whatsoever. Ah, that's interesting. Now, is it my internet that's fucked up? Or... Oh, it still seems to be going, but... Oh, I don't know. Ah, it's still there, look. Well, hopefully, boys and girls, you well, can... Well, if you would hit the... Yeah, start button, I was going to say. Well, no, the problem was you guys had all frozen. I wasn't seeing or hearing anything. Oh, that's, that's not what, good. That's why I had the start button up, so I could see the state of the internet connection. So, But it said there was nothing wrong. It's her inter internet. It usually does this around this time. Oh, no, all of you froze. All three of you. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm being stupid. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, it's just there. A little... little bit. You fancy just... a, do, you, do you fancy a quick five-minute rest? Uh, I can have a rest. I was just going to build real quick on your uh, Terry Nation naming things after things. Oh, please. Yes, 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 yes. Always. Um, what were the names of the red aliens? In this story? The, well, yes. It's almost like Vermilion, isn't it? Vermeer? Yes. Yeah. It's after Vermilion, the color red. Yeah. Right. So, there we go. You and learned like something the artist, today. Right? The Vermeer yeah, yeah, paintings like the artist, and whatnot. But, right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just figured it would I mean, fit in nicely with the... play, but yeah. Fit in nicely. Oh, by anyway. the way, there have been some photos released of that there shooty gatwa. I'm sorry, all my stuff has been tasteful. This week. Um, <laughs> there, um, there have been new photos leaked of shooty gatwa. Is his suit better? He's not wearing a suit. He's wearing a very long brown leather jacket. That's good. And it suits him. And he's not wearing a, a t-shirty, sweatery thing. It's a shirt. Mm -hmm. Looks a bit 70s still, but that's all right. That's the colour brown. You look at the colour brown and you think, huh, 1970s. Um, so, I need to do a quick plug. If you go to worldsbestestpoet.com, 
Not only can you buy the book, volume one of the poetry, the book. Uh, of the world's bestest poets, um, or you can get it on Kindle, which means the author gets more money, and there'll be a paperback with a forward by me when I get round to writing it. Um, uh, however, he's now got merchandise. Um, T-shirts and caps and cups and very expensive cups. Um, and and um, logo magnets and a pack of ten badges, button badges or whatever. Um, yeah, so there's now world's bestest poet merchandise. Um, he himself is busy pissing himself laughing about the whole thing. Because it winds people up. They think it's serious and they get most put out. <laughs> However, I'm starting to detect a little something in, an, in Sinister's poetry. There's more than a hint of the Milligan about it. Spike Milligan oh, was a poet. And he would... I am reminded of Spike's poetry. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, that's high praise. Now, I don't know enough to be able to say whether it's a good poem or it's a bad poem or, or, or what. All I know is I enjoy it, and it reminds me of Spike. So, job done, quite frankly. Do you two want to talk about Space Above and Beyond for five minutes? You've got five minutes, starting now. Uh, you mean Callan? No, Space Above no, and no, Beyond! No, Space Above and Beyond. Oh, my bad. You uh, this one okay. is actually the really good episode. Oh, yes, um, there is one. It actually comes out and says that the aliens speak Navajo, which is something that they've been trying to get through the entire damn thing. Which they've been trying to push, right, and keep screwing up for some freaking mm -hmm. reason, right? Sky gods. Um, so they this beat one a little bit, but this one has a special mission involved <clears> in it. <throat> Um, the 58th is set to fly escort to a remote piloted APC. The APC is manned by dead people. The dead people have on them plans, information that will detail an, an upcoming offensive. The mission is... Escort this APC and let it get downed. Deliberately fail the mission. Thereby getting the information into the enemy hands where they read it. It's in Navajo. So they'll be able to know what it is. And it's basically a huge disinformation mission. Um, it's brilliantly done. Uh, it is one of the better episodes because you see them, see the 58th putting together all the information that they've been given in their heads. From what you've been They're saying, just not asking the right questions. A good episode of Space Above and Beyond is actually quite a rare thing. At this late game, yes, because the Fox executives really ran rampant over this show. Mm -hmm. um, they they really screwed it up horribly. You can see that in so R and R last last week. It oh, yeah. was, mm -hmm. yeah, it was Space Nine Hundred Two One Zero. How many things are they? Week. Yeah, how many things are they trying to jam into one episode? Come on, guys, give it a rest mm -hmm. already, please. Um, Julio, drug you. problems, all that. How was uh, West? Oh, oh Westwatch. Gosh. Yes, Westwatch. Why West didn't alert. West just get hit by the by that APC? That would have been great. If the space bus thing could have just knocked him out of the sky, West could be dead and the show could go on and be that much better. Because let's be honest, 50% of the drag on the show's ratings was West. Mm-hmm. He was drag. He's the grown-up Cousin Oliver. That's my conclusion. West is Cousin Oliver grown the fuck up. And he's just killing it. I can't remember what Cousin Oliver That's was. It. You've told me what Cousin Oliver was, and I can't remember. The little you blonde know? kid with glasses that they would insert into various TV That's shows. Yep, thank you. And it was usually thank the same actor, Oliver yep. something, that who, yeah, would... That was the... You knew oh, that was yeah. the death knell for the show. 
Cousin Oliver shows up, and that show's canceled at the end of that season. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, so, it may yeah, have actually I've heard it elsewhere. There. So, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's Actual a it's a phenomenon. It's a real thing in TV. So you know, it's like jumping a shark or jumping something. It's shark. a real deal. Again, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. was a real. Yep. I've never so, actually yeah. seen that episode of Happy Days. Well, episode of Happy Days. I actually Grand saw that on broadcast for okay. jumping the shark. I mean, yeah, the shark <laughs> episode. So did I. That was a yeah, big yeah, event. Right. Yeah, it was. As he was jumping a shark. Yep. So literally, awesome. it was that was it. Tell oh, me you at least looked at that, that on yeah, PDAIS. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, come on. We can't I, I know. I know. We we didn't get to that particular Shark happy days. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I could just imagine it. Oh, God. Uh, so did you enjoy this episode? You said it was quite a good episode. You can Much tell I've got absolutely no interest in it whatsoever. Ones. Uh, I'm they also Brian. did one other thing well. Uh, they hearken back to World War II, not just D-Day, but some of the guys that like put the flag up on uh, Iwo Jima. And the fates of some of those guys, particularly one of the Native Americans who was there, who ended up dying, a Medal of Honor winner who died drunk in a ditch. Drowned drunk face down in a ditch, right? And, the, and that shows the, I guess, dichotomy of the life of the soldier versus the life of the soldier returning to civilian life you know you're not a civilian anymore you're a veteran but you know you, you and you can never return to being a civilian honestly you are too different especially after war i know from experience you'll never be able to fully assimilate back into society Sometimes it's probably the same for people who go to prison right we have a lot more of those i guess than people go to war it's, I think, it's but... institutionalized isn't it so you get used to a certain uh, yeah, way of a, life and a, everything's organized way, i guess yeah you know um i mean um, i can sort of I know I was only in the Navy for seven weeks, um, but I was in Seacrest for five years before that, which is essentially junior Royal Navy. And so I get what you're saying. You know, it's it, it, it's quite weird. I have different interests. No, they did a real but... good job of showing that, I thought. And and of the, the kind of things that a military person actually can suspect. When By you the way, see the I'm guys not comparing to each other going, myself to you, Spanky, in any way. Oh, no, 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 no. I, and I'm, I, I wouldn't think that anyway. No, no I'm saying that, um, no, but you see the fact that, and this is something that at some point in the Marines, especially I realized and a bunch of the other guys realized all around the same time when we got to combat, that those who lead you, will gladly send you to your death knowingly and not tell you that's what's going to happen if it will complete some form of objective. They will do so and without hesitation. And many of them will do it to achieve personal honors, honestly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that is that is the essence of the military. And hopefully if you're strong enough, smart enough, well trained enough really and can fight hard enough you won't die when that happens which was what this episode was essentially about right and that was d-day for most of the guys that hit d-day they had like a mini d-day basically i can't wait this you know go further down this road with this but so a lowercase d-day yes okay a little tiny d-day baby d-day would you like to know Small what we're going to do after space above guam me? or you know corregidor or something versus uh Europe. Um, right. What was your question? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I, I, uh, what would, you, would you like to know what we're doing after this? After space? I'd be curious to find out. I think I wrote it down. Well, in general, it is one of my ones I wanted to do, but it's currently undergoing a repeat season on uh, BBC Four, um, which means it might well be on the iPlayer. Um, <laughs> like I say we've still got said three more episodes of space colon above and beyond. Yeah, three left. Yep. After yeah. that, we're doing what is possibly the best oh, piece dear. of British television She's drama lisping. ever. All right. Edge of Darkness. I'm not going to say any more. I will say it's got a soundtrack by Eric Clapton. This is what again? Edge of Darkness. You want the BBC version and not the film. <laughs> um, okay. But again, I, I'm just, you know, we got three weeks. 
or whatever before we start on that. But it's it's early warning. That's the heads up. Like I say, I, I from my own personal viewpoint, it's possibly one of the best British television Is dramas ever made. Is this better or worse than Life on Mars or Ashes to Ashes? It starts slowly. I, I will be honest with you. That's the first episode, saying yes. And then it goes down a rabbit hole bit by bit by bit. You've got to keep track of various things going on. Who's saying what? Who's doing what? It's um, it's a thriller. So, you know, you've got to keep your eyes open a little bit. Um and like I say, it, it it builds and builds and builds. And then it has a crescendo. Um, but, and it's... Don't look at me like that, little bit. Um, uh-huh. I can't recommend this highly enough. You've just got to be a little bit patient with it, okay? It's old school storytelling from the 80s. And it's a prestige. Back then, it was a prestige drama. So, um, it's... Yeah, we'll be doing that. Um, there's an art party going on uh, for a director, a film director, um, who's played by Harrison Chase from The Seeds of Doom. And um, he's very interested in getting this lady who's, 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 whose like, husband used to be... Um, oh, that's good. He's leaving me high and dry here because he's the only one else. He's going to get Callum. the wolf. I know. He's I getting know. the wolf. Uh, but, um, and um, Callan's uh, he wants to interview this lady who's um, the wife of a UN ambassador or used to be, he's dead now um, but she could have learnt all sorts of things um, and Callan goes to warn her off and it works he, did it, he does it very very gently and it works. She understands what he's talking about. And Callan gets a bit smitten. And there is just, just a chance he might get a little bit of happiness. Callan just seems to be the type that's more attracted to brains than beauty. And this lady showing that she's smart and intelligent. Seems right up his alley. But you don't watch Callan. I don't watch Callan. I just keep hearing you two idiots talk about it all the time. <laughs> He's not wrong. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, this was an interesting twist on the usual thing. Um, like I say, practically straight away, she says, uh, no, all right, fair enough. I won't. You know, I'll back out. Banks, you back. Okay, back. I am. I had okay. to let each bond in. Sorry. That's right. I've, I've just told them what happened. Uh, what did you think? Okay. It's a bit different, isn't it? Uh, Callan actually gets a chance at happiness. Yeah, right. For a second, yeah. <laughs> but as usual, snatched. So, no. Yeah, hmm. No, I like it. It's a good episode. Uh, it's a good, I guess, standard episode for Callan, I suppose. You yeah. know, it's one of those ones that's. that's like. The quality, this is a good episode, don't get me wrong, the quality never gets lower than that. That's like their baseline. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah that's Mind why you, I like you've it, not seen honestly. the wet job. I'm trying to decide whether we're going to watch that or not. Yes, we are. We are? Come on, you can't leave episodes out. Sure. No, this is the um, special they did a few years later. One-off special. Yeah, let's do that. We'll throw them all in. and We could even do the interview with... Uh, Iwa Uwa later on where he's talking about it and stuff and like you know going all back over it like as a uh, what do you call it like a sort of riposte to the whole how his characters develop and how he ended up in the equalizer and stuff because this was straight up Iwa Uwa developing this himself as the actor you know as much as the writers were creating the characters but Spanky yes ma'am it's the wet job I mean, the alarm bells should be starting to (laughs) ring. That's all I'm saying. You know, it comes back a few years later, made by a different production company, using the same musician as Sapphire and Steel. Um, 
All right. Okay. If you want to do the wet job, mm -hmm. may Bod have mercy on your soul. If you don't want to, I'm not, you know. No, no, no. You've made your you've made your views perfectly clear. You want the whole lot. So we'll have to try and find the Edward Woodward Wood Entertainment Hour as well. I've got it on DVD. I'll see if Adam can rip it for us. I think it's on uh, YouTube, actually. Okay. Um, relationship with Hunter? How's that going? Uh, it is going. They, uh, you know, Callan's now his go-to guy, right? He's yep. acknowledged that openly. Yep. And so their relationship is forced to develop if not necessarily maybe maybe uh along more more f actually friendly lines they have to be more professionally courteous i think in a, in a strange way i think they're each starting know? to respect each other's position yeah there is some is more respect there right yeah. well as callan that's the that's the core callan though right the more you respect callan the more he'll respect you that idea does not fucking sit well in the military, okay? <laughs> you give me some, I'll give you some. They teach you that when they teach you how to lead men. That respect has to be given to be earned. Mm -hmm. But you are expecting to get respect the instant you show up with stripes on your collar or go bar or whatever. That's how, that's what every that butter bar in the happen. world does. That's why they all go in and start, you know, changing everything they can get their paws on, because they don't really know they're in command yet. Did you used to do saluting traps? It takes them a while to figure it out. Say again? Did you used to uh, set up saluting traps for, for new officers? No, we had a uh, sergeant major who was a Medal of Honor winner, and he would set up saluting traps. He would jump out of the bushes, literally around regimental headquarters, and rip butter bar lieutenants, a brand new asshole. Why did you salute me? I'm a Medal of Honor winner. Isn't that good enough for you, lieutenant? Slightly and just, like, different to what we did. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, you have to salute a Medal of Honor winner. I you know? know this. Um, and it was just like, oh... So hilarious because the colonel's up there in his office just snickering into his hand, you know, like ah, oh, it was uh, beautiful. Ours, it was so beautiful. Ours was we wait around the corner of the divisional building, keep an eye open, and when a newbie officer started walking on, along, we'd start walking past him one at a time. Start popping one guy every so often. And <laughs> each person would salute the officer, which meant he had to salute back. And by the end of it, his arm's ready to fall off. Mm -hmm. A saluting trap. It's, um... Oh, yeah. Life's hard, isn't it? Uh, right. Okay. The life of a butterfly. There's not a huge much to say about Kaladin, to be honest. You. Like you say, this is a baseline episode. Um, it's a baseline. It does. It gives you a little more idea into his personal growth. Callan for all his gruff demeanor and, and his kind of bastardish. He's really, what is this show? Everybody's a bastard coated bastard, <laughs> a crunchy bastard core or whatever. That's Callan in a fucking nutshell. He's a bastard at heart, but he's not an evil man necessarily. He's done evil. That's different. But he's not actually an evil man. He's done things because he, he has been taught or told they were necessary. And at times he's known that they were not, you know, and he's become jaded because of that. But... You can see here, like how he how he is able to interact, for example, with women with such success as he has, because he's not actually an evil guy. He may be a bastard, but he's still a decent man at heart. And he shows that to women and not the bastard, and that's where it plays into his character. And so you get to see this whole other face to him that you know only plays in a couple of times in the show, really. And you know it's freaking awesome. It's good character development. It's good writing. It's it's a very good baseline episode because it progresses the show, even though it didn't break like a lot of ground or anything. It just really this is what our baseline is, bitches. I, the I flash and glaze handy hint and tip for this week is surround yourself with more intelligent Thanks. people than you. Well, certainly more educated people than you. You've got two English lit majors here, so. Um, this is good. This oh, is very, very good. I'm there. very no. chuffed. I like this. Brian and I will sit here looking like goldfish. But um... <laughs> education is one thing; intelligence is another. What you're I able agree. to do with them is I actually totally how agree. smart you are. Like, like any parrot can recite a list of names or words. So, like, that's how a lot of people get to be doctor. Don't, don't. Chair, don't television, man, woman, camera. There Sorry. you go. 
Um, oh God, you actually recognize that. That's a worry that you recognize that. Oh God, you know what it really reminded me is that actress who used to be on that cop TV show who tried to become a, uh, a, a reporter on CNN or somewhere and she had such difficulty reading the cue cards. You know, the scrolling teleprompter that like she lasted like a week and that was it. She's gone. Oh dear. Yeah, it was terrible. I want to really actress, to be too, a local but, you know. TV presenter. I was yeah. very young. <laughs> very young. Um, right, here, so next week. Okay, sorry, wait a minute. The gratis fur thing. Oh, hey, yeah, it's here. Ichiban. Say hi, Ichiban. There you go, buddy. Okay. Sorry. Doggy. Because he's, he's over here like, dude, you better pet me. And if I start turning around <laughs> ignoring you, you're going to know what it is. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just petting the wolf because otherwise he's going to climb in my freaking lap and knock the freaking tablet off the table or something like that. So, yeah, no. I don't know what my cat and dog are up to. It's a palliative measure. Um, So, next week. Cancer prevention, pound of cure. Doctor Who and the Green Death. Um, Yeah. We'll do the global chemicals one, not the panorama chemicals one. Um, You're back in, are you? That's nice. Uh, The new First Doctor box set, the Chesterton Incident. Um... And uh, whatever space above and beyond it is, I really don't care. And another um, episode of sure Callan, which I'm not going to ask Spanky to look up because he got it wrong last week. I already did, and I wrote it down. Go on. I wrote it down. I can't remember. Why I, wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's where not, did you it write it down, love? Next to appear or something? I put it in the general. Oh, is it going home the, or something like that? Act of kindness. Yeah. Act of kindness. Act there you go. Kindness. Sorry, right. my bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> World's greatest slice water. Oh. Because when you push this button, lights up zappy. Oh, God. Oh, you love a zappy, don't you? That's how we it met. It is so cathartic. It flies with that thing to hear the zap and the, and the smoke. Martha, talk to me. Martha. Sorry. Both Batfly and Superfly. Will... I had to get that away Sorry. from him real quick. Right. Space Man Beyond and whatever the episode of Callan was. That's what we're looking at next week. Um, <laughs> I've no That's idea if there'll be two fan dinosaurs this Friday. We've still got the Keeper of Trakan and Legopolis to do. Trouble is, things have been happening that. That's real life, basically. Um, Andrew was unable to do it this Friday due to a sudden thing happening. Um, so. We'll get the tick off you in a minute. Yeah. Well, the Warcraft. Wow. Yeah. We're still playing Ascension, World of, of Warcraft Ascension. Well, some of us are. Um, you burnt out, didn't you? Some of us have started yeah. to show their yeah, own. We went well. way too hard. Way too hard, too fast. I still say, fast. I mean, you've already done it. I still say you should jump on the um, Rockstar server with the custom yeah, classes. Jump into that I'm shit. already on it. That's what I'm just... saying. Yeah. So it's not going to cost you money. I had just gotten my toes into Diablo Immoral, and now we're freaking back to Ascension, and I'm like, ah. Hold on, Cats off. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. We're going back hello. to uh, uh, that'll you know, be Diablo Four, though. And yeah, we'll 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 see. But the um, yeah, we've Wait. been playing uh, some of these custom classes. I've now got a necromancer who has lots and lots of ads, which have a mad aggro radius uh, on this Twitch channel forward slash Macfadian. Um, you'll see some of the streams I did this week. Uh, uh, including one with Spanky, where we had an escort quest which was barking mad. Show people your. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. It's the flashing blade. It's it's it's. The it, it's flashing blade. Is that blade is kind obligatory. of obligatory. Apropos, yeah. It's obligatory. It wouldn't be a blade without cat ass. So um, honestly, that's what Siobhan's only fans page is sourced in. Siobhan's so, cat you know. is not available. Therefore, your cat has taken <laughs> up the banner. And shown us chestnut. My area of darkness is just Dinner down there. It's, um, Ichi's done it once or twice too, just to throw a little diversity in there. Because yeah. we are diversity higher, no doubt. I did do a raid last night because I've got this, <gasps> I've got this new build, this uh, arcane gunslinger build, and you guys haven't been around to test it out in a mythic dungeon. Um, I did pug one, but you know you can't get anything. You can't really decide anything on a pug, basically. No. You know. You guys, yeah. regular, we team up, we know what it Plus, Jess knows how to read the DPS meter, and I don't. So yeah. um, I did one last night. I'm actually rather happy with it as a build. I'm going to keep it, I think. Okay, good. Cool. 
Um, have you tried to raid with the guild? I'm sorry, please say that again. Have you tried to raid with the guild? This was the guild last night. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Oh, that's the one, Brian, you died, what, three times in one and went, screw this? Yeah. When, nah. when I realized they stopped, he, they were going to, they stopped healing me. And oh. you're tanking. Well, the you only reason tank, I went back. back. I mean, he's the I'm tank, out. and they stopped healing him, yeah, and let yeah. him die three times. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. I know. died every single encounter we had. Well, even with trash Oh, marks. my God. Yeah. That's what, what? pissed me off. So yeah, I'm like, you know what? I got my I'm I out. got my shit. I'm out. Fuck y'all. Yep. See ya. Well, I, I doubt I'm doing I'm out. I, I, it's very cliquey. I'm afraid. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. In this case, of, no, I don't think so. But I've got the other server with these like, like I say 21 new classes. Uh, I've got I think it's a storm caller or storm summoner. Uh, and obviously the tinker, There's a which bunch is of them, yeah. hand wettingly It's going to take me a while to work my altitis through that. That is for sure. Yep, yeah, well, yep, yeah, yep. exactly. Um, Adam's coming on to Ascension this week, hopefully. Excellent. Oh, well, coming back to Ascension. However, I suspect his characters will have been wiped. It's been so long. Um, mm -hmm. We might be making Alliance tunes. I don't care. It's all the same to me, but sorry, Brian? there are those out there who gasp at I'm that. I'm sorry, Pharisee, what? So, I got you know. two. Yeah, you're just copying. I'm sorry. Did you, oh, I thought you said you had the two, and I was looking up, and you were shooting the bird, and so I figure, okay. So much for the, alliance the versus talk of ascension, whatever. Alliance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, this is just going to be for Adam. He's hardly ever going to play it, so if he wants to make an alliance tune, make an alliance tune. What the hell? Who cares? Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Who um, cares? Like say, we'll we'll probably get to level 10, and that'll be the last we play of it. Um, I do a miss Alliance, because I always used to play Alliance. And now I have to do... It's the actual cool. reason why I keep these around. What are they? They're not for me. They're for Ichi. What are they? Slim Jims. Little meat sticks. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> He's I got far more of them than I do. Her. Right then, um, we've actually managed to do a whole show. Little bit. What are you doing next week? Um, we've got Monday off. Hey. Day, so that's nice. Um, and then you know, just work and stuff as usual. Nothing too exciting. I'm working on crochet. I forgot money was present. I didn't. Yeah. It's a day off. Yeah, it's yeah. uh it's. A mail holiday, unfortunately, because the federal holiday and the VA mail my prescriptions out on Friday, so I don't get them until Tuesday instead of Monday, which yeah. is awesome with awesome sauce. Yeah, and the banks are closed. I and love that. Stuff that I, you know, on my day off, there's a lot of things I would like to be able to do. That you would love to do, right? Like sending things in the mail or dealing with the bank. But I guess if I get the day off, other people should too. So fair enough. Yeah. How no, gracious. No, 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 that's what I like about on the West Coast, right? Spanky, Thanks. what are you doing this Saturday, week? That was Apart from playing with um, your new laptop and swearing a lot. I will be playing with the new laptop and cursing in new and inventive ways that will impress and offend Please make a note sure of them. everyone on the planet. We talked about the Pope, stained glass window, Inquisition. Um, that will definitely happen, and I'll be dealing with that. That'll probably be about the most of it there. Oh, get, there get WoW put onto it and, and you know, what games I play. I prefer the most off of my Steam account. God knows there's hundreds of those probably, but they build up mysteriously. Normally through humble they do, bundles. Right? Well, I get it because and Hex and I, my brother. Hello. Well, you know, we're both since we're friends on there. All the people you're friends with, you can play all their games when they're not playing them. So friend me on Steam, and you can play all my games, and I can play all yours. I forgot about that, and I should have told you that, because that's where Hex and I suddenly stopped paying so much for games, because we didn't have to double up anymore, because we hardly ever played the same game at the same time. That would be brilliant if I was a real games player. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, it just gives Pussy you an idea cats. if you go out and look through stuff that your friends have, and just check it out and see if hang you're on, interested on, in it, on, you know? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm thinking. She has come to say hello, because she wants her dinner. What's her name? Again? Rosie. Rosie. Maisie and Jasper see? are Retta's cats. See? Okay. See? Say hi, Rosie. Hello, baby. Oh, that's... In you are being seriously tolerated. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
With hope, uh, that was with hope major, of, of food. Yeah, yeah this like, better be yeah. worth it. Now researching <laughs> new humans. <laughs> yes. You're going to have to scratch me and pet me and feed me so much later. That's what that look said. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. Dave, Dave kept he her came treats in, got on in the bedside drawer. Again. So every time I open the drawer to, you know, get out anything, like the TV remote controls or, oh, yeah. the, oh, you me? know. Oh, for me? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. She thinks it's she thinks it's for her. Yeah, he any kind of plastic wrap opens. Is that Slim Jim dude? <laughs> you know, like, like that. Like, he was a man who really adored man. cats. He Aww. loved my lot. My tango yes. he really liked, to be fair. Yeah, I've actually been considering taking on one of Tyler's uh foundlings. <laughs> really? I've told you about that, right? No, you haven't. Um, back around surprised. Thanksgiving, Tyler and his girlfriend acquired a box of a mama cat and four baby, four little jelly beans. Oh, um, how about that? Um, they were abandoned and they took them in. This was right at, this was a month after Rex passed away. Um, he was our family cat. Yeah. He lived for 18 years. Um, so I looked at it, at the box. I looked at them both. And I'm like, are theirs uh, <laughs> but no th they were little jelly beans literally oh. at that stage oh yeah um wow. so now, now fast forward there's you know four five cats running around his apartment um, <laughs> the males I are bigger than mom do me a favor before you actually do it speak to me I don't want to see another friend fuck up introducing a cat. Oh, no, I, I, I know how to introduce cats. Because I get the feeling your tie yeah. is... You, you, sorry, your tour is very, very particular. Yeah. He's also a I've been cat. considering it mainly because Ace is 15. Is it fair He's on him? He's already blind and deaf. Mm. Is it fair on him? That's what I'm... I'm weighing the pros and cons. Yeah, oh, yeah, quite right. I mean, whatever you decide, great. You know? Remember, it's very neuter. Oh, yeah, part. they're getting fixed. You have no idea have a, how fast they have a they're cautionary getting. tale for that. You know how Apparently my mom is. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, have already you, been through first. Team, you weren't done, so. were you, Spanky? Uh -huh. So, I mean, and look at you. Just again? You weren't fixed. Oh, no, so I turned you. out great, right? No, but no, like my mom one time got a cat she didn't know was pregnant from the pound. Uh, thinking, we'll just get another cat. We already had like two in a year. We had twenty-seven more, not twenty-seven total, twenty-seven more. Okay, because oh. she was lax at getting them spayed and neutered. We had people. I was working then down like at that. the docks and Wanchies, the fish houses. I took twenty-seven freaking cats to the fucking vet, and I fixed them all. <laughs> wow! <laughs> all, I am wow. done. Yeah, that's how I got to be friends with the vet. He put me up on a payment plan. And stuff. It was awesome. <laughs> Fair enough. Dr. Oh, Grossman, you ever need anything, buddy? You call me. I'm there anywhere, anytime, any place, pal. I got your back. I swear. You know he watches this, right? Um, I think mm -hmm. it's time for us to go away. <laughs> I think we've done everything. Um, we, we've done been everything? going for nearly two and a half hours. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We ran yeah, over this yeah, time. We've, okay. done, we've done a lot. Yeah, we've done much. So, um, something's working. Cat butt wolf shows bitching our usual diversionary thing, nipple hardening. It was all everything. We yeah, did it all it, we covered all the ticks, you know, Lord, all of it, everything. We hit the all of it. I don't think there's anything else we could possibly add. I'm waiting for a note to drop in the sky from the future historians, but they're they're silent. So yeah, we did it. Perfect score. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> ta <-ra. laughs>
something John Levine related, I suppose. I miss Sinister. Still, here's a goat. Any second? Ah! Told you. 